about set to go. The weather is beautiful. Temperature in the upper 70s, a slight breeze. Had some rough weather in here yesterday, but the weather today is fabulous. And Sean Wright gets ready to kick it away. Taking it is Israel, three yards deep, and he's coming out. He's at the 20, an opening. The kicker, the only man that can get him, and driving him out of bounds is Wright at the 49-yard line. Don Wright, the kicker, on the tackle, but Steve Israel showed us that speed early and hits an excellent operating condition at the 49-yard line. That's, Let's a, take... that's a great emotional start for any team, and they sure got the ball when they wanted. Brad Van Pelt, or Alex Van Pelt, I'm sorry, at quarterback, connecting on 55% of his passes in his freshman season. 17 touchdowns, only 12 interceptions. He went seven games without an interception. He's looking at first and 10, and he goes to Glenn DeVoe. DeVoe at tailback over the 50-yard line and gets inside to about the 49. DeVoe filling the fullback spot, and let's take a look at the pit offense. Alex Van Pelt at quarterback. Carl Hagens will see some action at fullback. Derek Lewis and Ron Redman are not available today. Redman out with injury. Derek Lewis serving out a one-game suspension for disciplinary action. There's the offensive line, always a strength of Pitt in the past. As they look at second down now, about nine. Straight ahead, Kervin Richards for the first time of the ball game, and he surges to about the 45-yard line. He's picked up there by Charlie Brennan, the free safety. Let's take a look at the Boston College defense. The front three, Stolberg, Marinaro is a good one. Ted Page will be up there at right tackle. Linebackers, the strength of this team, Kelly and Pearson and Caesar and Vahopek. Caesar and Pearson are great at the outside, and of course, we'll show you the secondary as time goes along here. Third down. And about four. Van Pelt play fake. Going downfield with Truitt at the 25-yard line complete. Chandler White drove him out of bounds. Nice gain of 19 yards on Alex Van Pelt's first completion of this ball game. Little bootleg action as he comes out on third and four. Truitt, who looked very good last week. Only a sophomore out of Birmingham, Alabama. Good speed. He runs precise courses. There it is. 19 receptions and 89 for over 20-yard point average. But Truitt came across the formation, was wide open in the middle zone. Good drive right here for Pitt. Caught four passes for 74 yards. Here are the defensive backs for BC. Dave Johnson and Brian Williams are veterans. White and Brennan are moving up to the challenge there. First and 10 for Pitt. Richards again. Richards open down to the 22-yard line for Hopic and Brennan. Bring him down for Boston College. Richards' first ever game as a collegiate came against Boston College last year as he filled in for Adam Walker uh, two years ago. 200 yards in that day. There he is. There's his stats from 1989. 1,282 yards, 5.5 average, 7 TDs. And that's the offense today. They're going to establish that tailback if they can. Here they have the single back set. 120 yards away coming into this game from moving to third on the all-time rushing chart here at Pitt. Tight ends in motion. Richard slips to the turf, brought down by Chandler White and Matt Kelly. Over on the far sideline at the 22-yard line, very little gain, and brings up a third-down situation. They're in the four-down down zone now, so they can move the football on fourth down. They, that time, they ran it back into the sideline with a tailback. The cornerback, White, came up, made the play, forcing a third down and about seven yards. Paul Hackett moving a lot of people in. He uses a lot of people at tight end to bring plays in. His offensive coordinator, Bill Myers, said, don't be surprised to see two tight ends, sometimes three tight ends, as the afternoon goes along as they try to establish that run. Here's Van Pelt with plenty of time, looking downfield, it is complete. Hosea Hurd just inside the 15-yard line, down to about the 11-yard line. It's an 11-yard grab for a first down. That time they came out with twins formation to the uh, left side of the screen. He comes out on a sprint-out action, pulls up here. Hurd runs an out pattern. The inside safety man here does not come up. They were playing tight coverage, but he beat him to the outside, got the first down. Hurd, as we know, has great speed. 4-4 four, four for the 40 can run the reverses for you. He's another one of their young, talented wide receivers. First and 10, all just outside the 10-yard line at the 11. Richards, 
Nance is outside a block, but Stolberg won't let him go anywhere. And Stolberg, along with Matt Kelly, provide the opposition. Ivan Caesar also laid a shoulder into the play. Big test early here. We know Pitt has some veterans returning in the offensive line, but that's going to be the test for him. They're not very deep as far as the talent goes. The offensive line of Laverio, uh, Dixon, Sestelli, Christie, and Miller, they're the ones that have to do the job. That time, they didn't give Kirvin Richards the chance to cut back, which he likes to do. Second down, about 11, back at the 11 and a half. Out of the eye, and here's Richards again. Probing the left side of the line. Caesar this time is the man who hit him, and also helping out Matt Kelly once again. In recent years, Boston College has not defended against the run. People have been able to move the football on him. We asked that question to Jack McNeil, and he says, I think we're going to be better. I like our outside linebackers. Caesar and Pearson both are healthy, both are outstanding. But the key will be how those three and four guys up front, Page, Marinaro at the nose, and Stolberg, hold up. There was a test for him that time. They did a good job, and they now forced Pitt into a third and long. Third and eight for the Pitt Panthers. Boyd across the motion. Here is Van Pelt falling behind Truitt in the end zone, incomplete. Then it brings up fourth down, and likely we'll see Scott Kaplan for the first time this afternoon. Just a little look-in pattern of the wide receiver, Truett. That time, the linebacker got his hand on it. Watch this. One, two, three-step drop. Hits him real quick. Good hands right here. Right in the face of the receiver, enough to distract him, and the ball was a little bit behind him. This will be a 19-yard field goal for Scott Kaplan on the left hash mark. Kaplan out of Coral Springs, Florida, was redshirted last year. Ed Frazier came on and did most of the kicking duties, and he's going to be back serving out a two-game suspension, and he'll be back next week. This will be a 26-yard field goal attempt. Hold was late. It was blocked and hit the ground and went through. This is going to be an amazing field goal as Joe Shirk calls it good. Pitt scores on a field goal that was deflected up through the uprights. They're on top by a score of three to nothing. We'll be back to Pitt Stadium right after this. And Frazier's done an outstanding job for BC as we get set. Three nothing Pittsburgh on a field goal from 26 yards by Scott Kaplan. Alessandro. Under it is Frazier. Frazier coming ahead to the 20-yard line and moves the ball out to about the 22-yard line. So it'll be a 24-yard return as he caught it two yards deep, and that's where Boston College will start first and 10. And Willie Hicks is the man who's going to direct this offense this afternoon. Hicks comes out of Mattapan, Massachusetts. He's a junior. Hit 47% of his passes a year ago. He came in at the Ohio State game and brought the Eagles back from a 31-7 halftime deficit. Wound up losing, but he directed several touchdown drives and made it close. Ohio State escaped with a 34-29 victory. Hicks rolling out on first down. Looking into the flats, it is incomplete and nearly picked off. Looking over there at Lewis Riddick. That time they came with nobody in the backfield. Three receivers to one side, motion kicks on a rollout. We'll see that play again. They blocked the corner, and he had a chance to tuck the ball and run. He elected to throw it, but I'm sure he'll get the word. If that defensive end or outside linebacker is down, run the football as you look at their offense. Ed Tone of the fullback, the offensive line. Bumpus, Radigan, and Ankin are the veterans. Matt Metz has also been out there. No huddle for Boston College. Quickly going downfield, it is complete. Over in the flats. At the 30-yard line, it's going to be shy of a first down. The receiver over there is Andre Green. The defense for Pitt, Keith Hamilton and Sean Gilbert, two great bookcase ends. Great linebackers, Walker, Gobb, White, and McDonald. And the BC offense again going without a huddle. It's Riddick as we see. This is trapped by Gilbert and sacked for a loss at the 25-yard line. A loss on the play of about five yards. When you talk about Gilbert, you're talking about one of the bright young players on this team. There he is, number 91 out of Aliquippa. He's 6'6", 300 pounds, runs a 4'8", 40, physically outstanding player. Watch the right side of your screen as you see 91 come in, just roll right over the tackle, Mets, and get to the quarterback. Big play already by that sophomore. Bill Kushner is in for his first punt of the season. A junior college transfer from Palomar Community College. And now a timeout has been called by Boston College. They were short a man on the field. They had to take a timeout in order to get this play off. And I'm sure it's bringing you great American independent football. Fourth down coming up for the Boston College Eagles, who on their first offensive series 
go for three downs and out, and they are ready to punt with Bill Kushner out of San Diego, a junior. Steve Israel is back, calling for the fair catch at his own 38, and that's where Pitt will take over first and 10. A 34-yard punt, no return, and the Pitt offense takes the field for the second time this afternoon. A lot of pressure early on the BC defense. Uh, off the kickoff, Pitt gets great field position, drives down, settles for three points. Right now, they get the ball right back with nine minutes and 44 seconds still left in the first quarter. They've got the ball on their own 40-yard line. And the key is who's going to be running at fullback for the Pitt Panthers. Their first three people are out, either through injury or whatever. Right now, there's going to be Carl Hagen out of Randolph, Massachusetts, a junior behind him, Kervin Richards. First and 10 of the 39 of Pitt. Richards on the pitch. Good block on the corner, but Kelly escapes it and gets it down at the 42-yard line, a gain of about three. We asked Jack McNell prior to the game what they had to do to duplicate the effort they had last year against Pitt's running game, where they held them to 77 yards. He said our linebackers have to run from sideline to sideline. That time, Kelly, the inside linebacker, the leader last year in solo tackles with 91, came over to make the hit on Kervin Richards. Second down for Pitt and eight to go at their own 42-yard line. Split backfield and the tight end in motion. And Sykes. And help Gunn finds Truitt in Boston College territory. Brought down at the 38-yard line. In on the tackle for BC. That time around was Clark. A 20-yard reception. Orlando Truitt with his second catch of the day. A beautiful example of the rhythm, the type of offense that Paul Hackett runs. Watch it here. This is Truitt coming back on the curl. Three receivers to that side. Opened up the middle by bringing the tight end in motion and bringing him back. Taking the linebackers out of there. Very sophisticated, well-controlled, and of course, there he is, Orlando Truitt. The sophomore Van Pelt understands this offense and executes very well. First down for the Panthers. High formation in the back of Van Pelt. Richards gets the handoff. Cradles the ball, looked like he was going to mishandle it there for a minute, and gets it down to the 33-yard line. Matt Kelly in him on the stop. Great balance by Kervin Richards. That time ran up over his right guard. Stop. Just slid to the left side, found the hole. You look up, he's got five yards. Came into this game needing 120 to surpass or move into third position, leaving only Tony Dorsett and Craig Hayward ahead of him. He may not be able to catch Dorsett, but he should be able to, he could possibly get close to Hayward before his career at Pitt is done. Play bank, and the pass to Truett. Complete down to the 15, inside the 15 to the 13-yard line. Charlie Brennan making the stop. But a big mistake by Chandler White. The cornerback came up inside on Truett. He caught the ball, pivoted to the outside. You never give him the sideline. That time Truett, uh, White did that. Watch this. It's a little sideline cut here. Stop pattern, throws the ball to the corner. He's got the ball. Look at that. He gave him the outside, guessed on the inside, made extra yardage. Beautiful balance by Truett. They really like this sophomore from Birmingham, Alabama. And Pelt, four out of five, 69 yards. First down hit at the BC 14-yard line. Here is DeVoe at fullback in our first flag of the game. DeVoe surges to the 11. Picked up on the tackle inside by Ron Stone, the sophomore from Dorchester, Massachusetts. And here comes Joe Shirk for the call. You see the indication is a hold against Pittsburgh, so you'll negate the gain and push the play back a little bit. As you look on the sideline, Paul Hackett talks to Van Pelt, who comes over. Holding, offense, 10 yards, first down to 20. So the ball is pushed back to the 23-yard line of Boston College. And it'll be first down and 20 for the Pitt Panthers. As Joe Shirk said, it's Boston College trailing Pitt by a score of 3 now. Double tight end set. Strong right formation for Van Pelt. Throwing to the flats to Sykes incomplete. And covering on the play, Brian Williams. Had to look eventually for the tight ends. They're going to be a prominent role, play a prominent role in the pit offense all season. He thinks, Paul Hackett does, that his tight ends are as good as any in the country. And here's one of them as he looks to Lionel Sykes on the corner, trying to break just to the side on a possession-type pass. Good effort by number 43, Brian Williams, the senior out of Cincinnati Moeller High School. You 
saw his statistics for the year. Duvall is back in at fullback now. Williams playing in his first game as this is BC's inaugural this afternoon. Hit already 1-0. Oh. Van Pelt to throw. Second down. 20. Complete to Richards. Chasing it as Kelly to the sidelines and flattens him at the 16-yard line. Good, Gain of four. Good job by Matt Kelly to catch up with Richards in the open field and hold him to about a nine-yard gain. That time a little pressure that time on Van Pelt, but again, the balanced offense hitting the backs out of the backfield. Here's the tailback coming right out, slipping into the flat, and Kelly in the open field as a linebacker had to make that hit or else it was a big play. Chris Boyer is into the ball game. The ball is out. Higgins is in at fullback. Boyer at wide receiver, so it'll be a double wide set this time for Pitt. Boyer to the short side of the field, landed to it to the strong side. Three wide receivers now. The man in the slot, that's Hosea Hurd. Third down, Pitt leading 3 0. Big rush on the screen is intercepted by Matt Kelly at the 20 yard line. That's why I need one out. Two great plays back to back by that senior out of New Canaan, Connecticut, Matt Kelly. Beautiful execution by Pitt. They had the wide receivers. They spread the field. They set it up to go to Kervin Richards. Watch 27 slip up in the middle. Get right behind his offensive line. But Kelly, the veteran, comes off the block and makes a great play. The ball was thrown a little bit high. That stops a Pitt drive, and BC will take over at the 20-yard line. It is Pittsburgh leading Boston College with 6.25 left to go in the first quarter of play. Read it up. Introduce... Willie Hicks rolls to the left. Block, and he throws an interception. It's going to be picked off by Lewis Riddick at the 36-yard line. Intended, it looked like, for Ray Hilbert. It was for Hilbert, the senior, re the senior receiver out of Cincinnati. Three receivers to the left side. Hicks comes out on the roll here. He's looking for Hilbert to break in the middle. He just lays the ball up and throws it. Poorly thrown pass. Big turnover here. BC with the momentum of Kelly's interception. They turn the ball right back, and Pitt picks it up inside the BC 40-yard line. Lewis Riddick with the interception. You know, they've rated defensive backs in the country, and in many people's opinion, Lewis Riddick may be the number one defensive back around. He fits uh, really every aspect you look for as far as a strong safety is concerned. Each team matching turnovers now. Van Pelt goes to work in Boston College territory. First down. Pass complete to Richard. Breaks some tackles, spins, but can't elude the grasp of Matt Kelly. As Kelly throws him back just about at the line of scrimmage, the 38-yard line. Interesting call. Turnover right away. Paul Hackett goes to the pass, catching uh, on a turnover. And that time, as he spread the field again with his receivers, he looked for Kervin Richards coming over the middle. That was the outlet pass. He caught the ball, made a couple of good moves here. But as he starts back, the pursuit gets to him. And Kelly, 92, makes the hit. Three big plays in a row for Kelly. By the way, for Riddick, that's his third career interception. Second down, 10 for Pitt. DC 38. Richard behind the wall, but again, Boston College foils it. Big tackle made. Stolberg is there on the hit. Also, in on the stop, Mike Marinero. A good one in the middle. It's early going. We're still in the first period, but as far as the running game goes, BC has hung in there tough, and they've had their backs to the wall. Pitt has had good field position. They're doing a good job in the defensive line. It's up to Pitt's offensive line to get those people out of it, give Kirby Richards a chance to make a cut. Pearson in on the tackle as well as Marinero as Jack McNell looks on. Kervin Richards with only 20 yards on a carry. He's the lone setback on third and nine for Pitt. And is leading 3-0. And Pelt complete. This time it's to Ivan Boyd at the 30-yard line, short of a first down. Tackle made on the play by Todd Wood, the sophomore out of Mount Vernon, New York. Again, the tight end in the offense coming underneath the linebackers. He was there, not enough for the first down. Fourth down situation. The ball sitting right on the 30-yard line. The choice now for Paul Hackett, and he brings 83. Dave Moore. Dave Moore, who plays both fullback and tight end because of the, uh, the fact that, uh, that Lewis is out of the ball game today. So he's coming with a double tight end right now, and they're going for it. Going for it on fourth down and about four. Fourth and three on the 30. Van Pelt to throw. Sees Richards in the open. He mishandled it, and it's going to be incomplete. 
He had a step on a defensive back that time, David Junta. Came with two tight ends, a pro set. Richards sitting at right half back to the right side. Just released him up the gut. Linebacker has to cover him. He wasn't there. The safety came over late, but he just didn't hold on to the football. Alex Van Pelt talking with Scott Stark. Change of position coming up here as Boston College goes on the offense at their own 30-yard line. 3 nothing Pittsburgh back after this word from your local station. Pitt gives up on downs, and here's how it happened as Alex Van Pelt goes to the air to Kervin Richards. He's wide open. He should catch this ball. He just didn't break to the outside too, too fast. He looked over his shoulder, kept running straight away from him. The like pass pulled, was there. Looks like he pulled his hands in a little quick, too. Willie Hicks back on offense. He hasn't been out there enough so far. Only four plays this afternoon. And off comes to Sanders. And he pops outside for a first down and more. Brought down by Steve Israel at the 44-yard line. A gain of 14. Starting on the 30-yard line. That's the best field position BC has had early in this ball game. And they move it out with Sanders, the veteran, the senior out of King, North Carolina, carrying the football here. Number 34, good balance, good cut to the outside. Really a fine back. Doesn't get the credit because really BC's record hasn't focused on how good a back he really is. He's hurt him, but he's a good one. Gain of 15. There you see his report chart from last season. First to 10 BC at their own 45. Rolling out. Hicks finds a man across the middle, throws it to the section. Hexler with it. Hexler back to the 49-yard line. Pass intended, it looked like that time for Green. A 12-yard return by Doug Hexler. And it is going to be another first down for Pitt and another pickoff on the second turnover. It's a bootleg play. He comes out off a bootleg action. He comes out to the right side. And you'll see it here. There's the fake there. He comes out with the ball. He's wide open himself. He's planted. He sees his receiver clearly coming across. He's looking for number two, Andre Green, coming from the left side. Hetzler, the veteran, came right in there. The senior diagnosed the play, made a big play for Pitt. They get the ball back. Fourth career interception for Doug Hetzler. Senior out of Pittsburgh. DeVoe, the fullback, gets the handoff. Gets over the 50-yard line. Brought down at the GC 49 by Matt Kelly. Also in on the stop for Boston College, Jay McGillis. But there is Glenn DeVoe. Glenn DeVoe has excellent speed and power, good hands. And he's impressed Coach Hackett. And that's why he's getting a chance to back up behind Kirvin Richards. And today, because of their fullback situation, we're seeing both a tailback and a fullback. Ron Redmond injured with an Achilles heel. Derek Lewis, the number two man, out with a disciplinary suspension for one game for missing practice. Here's Van Pelt. And off to DeVoe. DeVoe brought down by Kelly, just shy of the first down at the 42-yard line of BC. Almost out of a single back offense that time. Looks like the old Veer play, the outside Veer, where he stretches out, gets the ball to him, and lets him just run off tackle. Watch this as he comes down the line, just reaches far, gets the vote of ball. Good block on the corner by number 82, Eric Holsworth. Gives him a chance to cut it back inside. You know, when you look at DeVoe, and there you see him at 5'11", 190, and Pitt really, even with Redmond in there, is not big at fullback. They like to throw the woman off a lot. Third and one of the BC 42-yard line. Pitt leading here, 3-0. And it looks like the left guard jumped a little early. That's going to be uh, uh, Gorjeski from Pittsburgh, the sophomore left guard. Gorjeski's in there because Dave Dixon is hurt. Illegal procedure, offense, five-yard penalty, still third down. Little mistakes when Pitt has had position here early and possession and, and good position early in this ball game. Interceptions short of the, on a third down call. Here they get another one on a, on a penalty that forces them back to third and six. A holding penalty, of course, set up a fourth down situation that they could not convert on. They have to turn the ball over once. And now they face, they are faced with third and six. Up three nothing, but backed up to the BC 47. And held over the middle. Little slip. Goes to DeVoe inside the 30. And he's down at the 28 yard line. 19 yards on the play. First down, Pittsburgh. Well, passing, you distribute the ball in Paul Hackett's offense, the tight end, the wide receivers, that time number 32, DeVoe, out of a split back on the right side, top of the screen, just swings out of the backfield, comes over the middle, nobody covering him, the linebackers got to look him up in the open field, as we said earlier, he's got some good moves, and he gets the first down. 
Van Pelt threw 51 passes to his back a year ago. There you see what he's done today. He out at 12. First down. Van Pelt over the middle. A man open. Hurd for a touchdown. Pittsburgh. Dead to right over the middle. Great speed, Hosea Hurd, the senior out of Augusta, Georgia. Came right down, just ran a post pattern in the middle. Safeties were split. He was wide open, and Alex Van Pelt picked it up immediately and hit him for the score. Hosea Hurd makes it 9 nothing. but wait, a flag on the play. And this may call it back. Well, this is tough because Pitt has been hurting themselves in great field position here. It was a very late flag that came in from the far side. If it stands, it would be a six-career touchdown, but it doesn't look like it's going to. Let's see what they're let's talking about. Here. here comes the referee, Joe Shirk, and let's get an explanation as we look down the Pitt sideline. There's a live ball foul, flipping on the offense, 15-yard penalty, and two offsetting unsportsmanlike, like which will cancel. Repeat the down. That's what we saw. We saw the flag late, which was the unsportsmanlike, but the clipping call happened early. The flag was very late on both of those. Tough play for uh, Pitt. Big score. It got him emotionally up, and all of a sudden they look up now. They take the points off the board. And they got the ball back on the 43-yard line of BC. Cliff happens down at the 28-yard line and negates the touchdown and leaves the score at 3 nothing with Pitt leading here, 3 to nothing. 2:18 left to go in the first quarter of play. Jack McNeil breathing a little easier on that one because Jose Herb was wide open. So far, the Pitt passing game is very impressive. Lots of distribution, lots of people in the action. Tight end, backs out the back to a wide receiver. The running game, DC is held up against. But the passing game, Van Pelt has had time. His experience is showing. They really have a lot of versatility, a lot of weapons to go through. A lot of leadership qualities in that young man. Paul Hackett talked extensively about that. One of the big problems BC has had in recent years, they haven't had, they've had their problems on defense against the run, but they really haven't been able to mount any kind of a pass rush. Here's the play. Watch the it's a drop back action from the left side of the screen. Hosea Hurd, number 85, is going to come right in the middle, splitting the safeties, and there he is, wide open for the score. We don't pick up where the penalty is. But the resultant clip moves the ball back to the 43-yard line, and he'll repeat the down. First and 25, the ball at the 43 of Boston College. Hosea Hurd splits wide out to the top side of your screen to the bottom. That's Truett. Splits backfield. Here's DeVoe. DeVoe runs over the 41-yard line and then gets brought down by Pahopic. And also in on the play, Kevin Pearson. Pearson hit him first coming in from the outside linebacker, slowed him down, but his balance got him back to the line of scrimmage and he picked up a couple of yards. Defensively, again, BC up front is playing tough. On the line of scrimmage, they're down linemen, Page, Marinaro, Stolberg, holding up well against the run. Pearson, Caesar on the corner doing a good job. Pearson, a fifth year senior, second down and 23 on a gain of two by DeVoe. Dave Moore played fullback that time. And he's back in there again at full with DeVoe in at the tailback. Alex Van Pelt airborne to Truett, overthrew him. Double coverage on the play provided there by Williams. And also in on the defensive coverage, David Junta. Five under coverage, two deep. They split those two safety men and almost got Truett up the sideline. The safety was late coming over. The pass was just a little bit long by Alex Van Pelt. Minute 31 left to go on the first quarter. Van Pelt looks to the sideline for the play call from the sidelines. Paul Hackett coordinates all of his offense from the sideline. But what Pitt is doing is they come in with a lot of tight ends, but they're also splitting the field now with the wideout stretching that perimeter. Now they've got a, a twins formation of, with Hosea Hurd in the slot here on the right side. They go with a draw, and it doesn't work. The ball call. gets to the 40. You would think on third and 23 that uh, Paul Hackett would be looking airborne. That was PC's guess, but it wasn't to be. They go with a draw play, and it doesn't get much. Maybe a yard to the 40. Brings up fourth down. There you go. 
Going but, for it on fourth. No, now they, they break back into punt formation, and Scott Stark, who handles the short punts, the coffin corner kick, high snap. He'll get it away. It's a nice job done inside the 10. They got it at the 2, an excellent punt. Hey, you got to have a 39-yard punt, but look at what happened. High snap, Stark, the quarterback, the athlete, goes up and steals it, then bunts the ball down the field and gets it inside the 5-yard line. Big break for Pitt. Good call. What they do is they come out in a formation set with the quarterback, Stark, underneath the center, and then they shift. One, to get you offside, or two, just to, to, to put you in that tough position. Look at the play by Stark here. He just pops that ball up. Good kick. BC wants to stay away from it. Smart move there. But it bounces against them. Landon Truitt downs it at the two-yard line. Greenfield's the regular power kicker. Here comes Hicks to Toner. Toner trapped in his own end zone. Uh, Looks like his impetus got him out. Good initial, his initial impetus, you're right, got him out. A very interesting call. They were really all over him. Tim thought they had a safety. Let's see it again. There's Toner. He should get upfield. He stays outside. Big hit there by Ricardo McDonald, 48. And it looks to me like they had him in the end zone from that angle. Gilbert looked to shut him off for sure, but the officials say he broke the plane with the football and got out to the one. And that's where they'll mark it. He's going to be a loss of one. He needs a lot of poise down here offensively. No mistakes. They've got to handle the football. Don't get it out there. Get a little room. Don't the long setback. Here's a naked sweep, and it goes to Chamuro, the tight end. Completing, he's got a first down on the very last play of the first quarter. Gutsy uh, call right there, Steve. Gutsy call by BC. They found Chamuro crossing over there off the naked bootleg, you call. Martin here, along with Bob Cassiola, our first of... 11 Great American Independent Football Telecast brought to you through JP Sports this year. Gilbert in motion. Kicks hands off to Tim Frazier in his first carry of the afternoon. The extra from Lynn, Massachusetts gets up over the 15-yard line and makes his way to the 17. Craig Gobb is in on the tackle for the pit defense. Craig Gobb, who led the defense last week against Ohio U with seven solo tackles. As we mentioned earlier, his dad, Art, played here in the 1950s. Played along with Seaman, the tight ends, that. North uh, Seaman. That's right. Right. And, uh, Joe Walton, of course, is part of that scene, too. And we're going to find out more about the Walton family at halftime, so stay with us. Second down. About six to go now for BC if they're on 17. Kicks. Short drop. Short pass to Green, completed the 24. Israel covering on the play for Pittsburgh. BC looking to find receivers. They don't have the talent they've had in recent years. Ray Hilbert's the most experienced one, but in Andre Green, they have somebody with some quickness and speed, good hands, this time on a stop pattern. He comes down, he slips a little bit, but concentrates on the football, and a good pass from Hicks gets him another first down. And stay tuned. At the conclusion of today's game, we're going to be selecting our Schick most valuable player from each of the teams we're seeing here this afternoon. Let's look at Andre Green. One, two, three. There is Billy Hicks bringing the Eagles out in their first sustained drive of this football game. They trail three to nothing. They're throwing 24 and a half yard line. Frazier in motion. On the counter, here's Toner. Toner picks his way to the 30 yard line. Nelson Walker and Craig Dobb stop him there for Pittsburgh. A little motion from the tailback. Toner, who carries the ball on short yardage, been starting here. For four years, actually, he's seen a lot of action for BC. He's a durable back from Swampscott, Massachusetts. But that time, a little counterplay gets upfield, keeps the defense honest, picks up six yards. His dad played for BC, also played for the Giants and the Packers. Second down and four after the gate of six by Toner at the 31 yard line. Blitz on for Pitt. Toner gets nailed behind the line of scrimmage and squirms his way up. Gobb makes one of the hits. Also in on the tackle was Terrence Wheatley. There's the hit right in the backfield by number 57. That's Wheatley. He's only a, he's a red-shirted freshman. Very impressive this spring. Tough physical player. You know as a red-shirted freshman to be playing here with this club, he's got to be a good one. He's very aggressive. Fred Van Appen, the uh, defensive coordinator, says he's a real aggressive, intense type player. Ricardo McDonald finished off the tackle. Third down, loss in the play of two, makes it third and six. Hicks going back to throw against the blitz. 
Sets up and then falls down at the 22-yard line. Hamilton covers him up, and that's it. In talking to Von Oppen, he told you he likes to come after people. That time he put nine people up on the line of scrimmage, came with eight, and they put pressure on Hicks. And he almost got on the corner, but he was indecisive. He didn't know whether he wanted to tuck the ball and run it or throw it. He tripped, fell down. Here's BC with another punt. Kushner for the second time this afternoon. Israel back to receive. Short. Balls near midfield. Takes a hit bounce. And it's finally knocked down by Brian Williams. And they'll mark it down at about the either the 48, but they'll probably move it ahead to the Boston College 45-yard line. No return on the 32-yard punt. Pitt leading by third time that Pitt has started to drive beyond midfield, albeit five yards this time. Their first drive, 42 yards for a field goal. Then they drove to the 16 of BC and threw the ball away. Missed on fourth down and then had a touchdown call back. Gave up the ball on the BC 40-yard line. Sykes and seen in the double tight end, but this is Kirvin Richards. Richards breaks tackles and gets to the 40-yard line. Brought down on the play by Boston College, and that is going to be Mike Marinero making the tackle, but Richards proves to be a very uh, evasive target. Right now, Poapek, the uh, linebacker, 46, has him right here in the backfield, makes the hit, but he bounces off. There he goes. Good balance. Ducks under that. And turns a big gain into what could have been a, a loss. Second down and five. Ball on the BC 40-yard line out of the I formation. Higgins is at fullback for pick. Here is DeVoe. DeVoe gets open and slips out of bounds. They'll mark him out at the 28-yard line. Driven out by Brennan. A 12-yard gain by Glenn DeVoe. Glenn DeVoe gets up inside here. They run the ball back into the, the boundary here nearest the camera. Watch this. He gets a good block from the fullback. Higgins kicks out on the uh, outside linebacker. It gives him a chance to get a little seam, and he gets up field for a good gain. DeVoe had 14 yards worth of uh, running room in the first quarter, but he's picked up considerably more real estate here in the second. First and 10, hit at the BC 28. A deep hand off to Richards. Richards gets a nice hole. He's free at the 10. Pulled out of bounds by Matt Kelly at the three with help from Johnson. Great set here. Two wide receivers to the top of the screen. Two tight ends. They put Richards deep in the backfield. They get him the ball off a little counter action. He's looking for a seam. He's looking for an opening. And there he explodes right there. He gets up field. And this is the first time that Kervin Richards has had a chance today to really make some yardage. And he took advantage of it. 26 yards downfield. Gets it down to the five, actually the four yard line. And there you see swerving Kervin Richards. His career rushing last week, 121 yards. Rolling out, here's a naked sweep by Van Pelt. Nobody open. He rushes to the sideline. Caesar chases him out and knocks him out at the two. Ivan Caesar gets a hold of his shoulder pads and knocks Alex Van Pelt out at the two. He looks a little shaken up on the play. It's a gain of two. He did well to get outside of the pursuit of Caesar without taking a loss. Here we see it here. Play action fake comes out off a of bootleg action, looking to set up here, but he's looking now. He's looking to throw the ball. He raises his arm to hope that the backs will come up for him, and he can dump it off. But there he steps out on the two-yard line. Big play by Caesar, but also an equally great play by the quarterback, Van Pell. Bullhouse backfield. The ball gets the carry and gets down to about the one. Good penetration at the point of attack by Boston College. That time Pearson helped out on the play. He was defensive tackle Ted Page, number 90, got inside, just got a piece of him, enough to slow him up so he couldn't find that goal line. Page, a red-shirted freshman at 6'4", 250, out of Cherry Hill, New Jersey, starting today against Pitt. Pitt has had one touchdown called back, a 30-yard pass reception to Orlando Truitt on a clipping call. This time they want to make sure there are no mistakes. DeVoe, Higgins, and Moore in the backfield. Van Pelt carries his own number, gets close to it. One of the players, DeVoe, signals touchdown, but it looks like it's going to be short. Fourth down situation. Came up in a power eye set. Van Pelt tried to take it on his own with a sneak. Now does Paul Hackett send the kicking team in? No way. It's inside the one. He's going to go with Kervin Richards into the ball game at the tailback spot. Coming out will be Glenn DeVoe. Fourth and goal on the one-yard line. 
Higgins is in at fullback. Very important now, Pitt get a score. They've had many opportunities early in the ball game, really, with only three points. Richards, the up back. BC moves everybody up. Van Pelt calls his own number. Is he in? He's the no first indication first. yet. No, he's not. Didn't make it. BC starts the celebration. The Eagles' defense is held. You gotta say that this BC defense put in very awkward position so far in this first half has done the job. They've had terrible field position and Pitt just hasn't been able to capitalize on it. Look how close that football is to the end zone. Here it is again. He's gonna try and sneak it himself. He ducks behind his right guard in the center, Sestelli and Christie. And he gets turned around and the official looks at it as if he didn't break the plane. Put a bit of deck of cards between the edge of that football and the end zone. And Paul Hackett wants an explanation. He's not happy about it. 918 left to go in the first half of play. It's a timeout here called by Pitt. The Panthers lead it by a score of 3 nothing. We'll be back. Their own one-inch run. Tom McManus credited with stopping Alex Van Pelt on the fourth and goal. Here's the first play from scrimmage on BC's result in possession by Mike Sanders. It's a little bit of running room out to about the two-yard line. During that timeout, Paul Hackett had two of the officials come over and he was discussing it. He really felt he didn't get an early call and he was very concerned about the marking on the ball. Twice, actually three times inside the two-yard line, they went right up the middle twice calling Alex Van Pelt's number and did not break the plane of the end zone. Paul Hackett found that very unusual and hard to believe, as you would imagine. Second down at about nine from the one and a half. BC backed up deep in their own territory. It's a position that they found themselves in all day. Hicks will throw. Maybe. It is caught. Pitt is saying it's incomplete. It looked like it hit the ground. Well, here's the here's the umpire turning around right there, looking at the ball, making no call, and the side judge comes in and makes the call for him. Now, I'm not, let's look at this. Watch the umpire right in the middle there. There's the pass. He turns and looks. And the ball hits the ground and he doesn't call it. That's bad officiating. Ray Hilbert caught the football. Paul Hackett shaking his head. Now he's got a smile on his face. Unbelievable. That ball hit the ground. He's got a right to complain right there. Third down coming up for BC. A gain of five on the play. It's hit 3 nothing. Now flags fly and we've got another penalty. It may be too much time. Maybe too much time. Long thrown in an area where you would expect that, where the time is kept by the back judge. The land game, offense, half the distance to the goal, risk the down. That's poor. They should never have that happen in this situation. The play has to be called. they got to get up and make the play. Ball goes back to the two-yard line, half the distance. So it nullifies what they got on that completed, incompleted pass. Well, maybe it's... Uh... <laughs> Maybe it's just a serve, Bob. As Boston College comes out here trailing by a field goal. Surprising considering the amount of time they played in their own end of the football field. Sanders in motion. Kicks the throw. Big rush on, and he throws it into the ground. Intended for Toner. Toner in the area. Prentice right covering on the play, and BC will have to kick it out of their own end. Interesting zone. calls here. One rushing attempt, three passes. They end up giving the football here. They're going to punt from their two-yard line. Watch the pressure from Pitt. Kushner, the punter for BC, really hasn't gotten much distance today. Last punt was only 23 yards. He does it for the end of his end zone. It is blocked, and it is recovered out of the end zone for a safety. Looks like Glenn DeVoe blocked it. Headed off the field to the sidelines. Let's see. He's got his back right on the end line. Here he comes. He doesn't handle the snap well. And that was enough for number 42 to come across his face. And that's Vernon Lewis, a defensive back who made the play. Great play by Lewis. Free kick coming for BC. The safety gives Pittsburgh a 5-0 lead over Boston College with 7.26 left to go in the first half. Behind that, the restraining line to 20. Free kick situation here for BC following the safety. Here's 
Israel at the 31. Big tackle late on Israel at the 37-yard line. McManus, the man who made the goal line stand for Boston College, was the man who made the tackle on that. McManus, a fine young sophomore from Edgewater, Florida. Plays linebacker, gets on the special teams. Excellent young prospect. 19 solo tackles last year as a freshman. Van Pelt back at the control to the pit offense now. He's got Kervin Richards at tailback. Carl Hagen is in there at the fullback spot. Double tight end set, split end wide to the top. Richards. Richards hits Bohopek and goes straight ahead over the 40 to the 42 yard line. Gain on the play of three yards. Richards broke loose for a 26 yarder that carried Pitt deep into Boston College territory. Let's take a look at what Pitt has done this afternoon. They've had the ball five times. Look where they picked up the ball. Twice in BC territory. Plenty of opportunities, really only five points. They've got to get a touchdown here soon or else, you know, the tide of any game, no matter how poorly or how well you're playing, always gives the other team a chance. Pitt's got to come up with a score. And Pelt to the flats. It is complete to Hosea Hurd at midfield at the 50, just inside Boston College territory. Gain on the play of about nine yards on the pass by Van Pelt. Hosea Hurd just comes down and runs a sideline cut in front of Brian Williams, the senior. Gives him a little cushion. Pass right on the money. There's Hosea. Three receptions already today for 48 yards. But well thrown by that guy right there, Alex Van Pelt. Very so. impressive passer. Control. Here he is, only a sophomore. And those catches by Hurd do not include, of course, the catch for a touchdown that was called back 30 yards out. So Hosea could be having an even better day if that not was called back by the clip. First down, pin at midfield. Pass complete. Goes to the tight end, Lionel Sykes, for the first time this afternoon. All blown dead at the 47-yard line. Spread the ball, distribute the ball to a variety of players. That's the goal of this pit offense. Now they hit the tight end coming right here on the sideline. Puts the ball beautifully thrown again by Van Pelt. Sykes takes the ball in stride, gets upfield, picks up about three yards. Nice tackle on the play by Brian Johnson taking the, free, the uh, tight end on. Sykes has got great size. Van Pelt to Richard. Richard in the grasp of Mike Marinero as he goes over the 40-yard line down to about the 43. Gain on the play of three yards. Good switching here. Now running the football, passing, good mixture. On the calls by Van Pelt, keeping the Boston College defense, you know, guessing now what they're going to do. The big thing so far in this first half, offensively for Pitt, has been their ability to throw the football to a variety of receivers, and that's what is putting pressure on BC now, and really keeping Pitt's possession most of the time. Van Pelt on third down. At four, the BC 43, hit leading, 5 nothing. Pass to Choi, complete. Brought down at the 20-yard line. Chandler White in on the stop, as well as David Junta. 23-yard gain for Orlando Truitt. Just runs a fly pattern right up the sideline, beautifully thrown by Van Pelt, but the, the senior White does never find the football here. He's got to look and find the football. He didn't know where it was, and a great effort by Truitt, just going up and making the play. That's an athlete. He's going to be probably the next great receiver they'll have here. Only a sophomore. Last week against Ohio U, he had four receptions for 74 yards and one touchdown. That one was for 23 this time around. It brings Pitt to the Boston College 20-yard line. Kervin Richards. Richards gets out of one tackle by Stone. Squirts ahead. He's in open territory inside the five. Finally brought down by Williams at the three-yard line. And you're starting to see what's happening to BC. Early in this game, they've been on defense too long. And that time you saw for the first time a lot of arm tackling, which you can't do against the back of this quality. Watch it here. Here's the first one reaching out right there, 25. You've got to hit him. You've got to put a shoulder on him, a pad on him right there. And he just breaks that thing, and now they're inside the five-yard line. Had Williams not come up, Johnson would have been the third man to be broken inside. DeVoe, the tailback, he gets the call. He's in the end zone, touchdown pit. No flags, this will count. Good job, 
job on the left side offensively by Pittsburgh, the left tackle Laborio, and Gorgeski, the left guard, gave him a chance to break it outside. That was the kind of play they needed, the kind of drive. The BC's defense has been on the field too long. Watch this formation right now. They spread the field here in anticipation of calling a pass or running the football. Now they move back. Kepsler to hold for Scott Kaplan. Give Kaplan a chance to, uh, to kick it. Kaplan, five for five on point after last week. Drills this one through and Pitt now moves out in front by a score of 12 to nine. This game in their own territory, both offensively and defensively. And for the first time in that series, you start to see the defense wilting a little bit. They've been out there a lot. Sanders at the four. Solomon Wall up the middle, but Pitt manages to penetrate it and bring it down at the 21-yard line. Most of the people in on the tackle, Terrence Wheatley was one who had a big shoulder in that time, and Jack McNeil looks on. Alexis uh, Perkins, Lex Perkins, also made a nice stop. We'll see Boston College's offense here. Jack, a little bit of operating room. As we look at Jack McNeil beginning his 10th year as head coach at BC, and he knows that he'd like to get off this season because as you look at his schedule, he's got a tough one coming up. He's got Ohio State next week. He's got to play the likes of Penn State, Syracuse, Miami. Stoppage of play on the field by the officials. New quarterback now coming in for Boston College as well, and that is going to be Mr. Foley, Glenn Foley, a redshirt freshman out of Cherry Hill, New Jersey. He has a lot of potential. Jack Mel really likes it. Quarterback. He's rolling out the pass. First ball of the game. It is incomplete intended for Andre Green. Hit him right in the letters. Couldn't pull it down. Now, Glenn Foley's in this game early because BC hasn't done much. They haven't had good field position, but Willie Hicks has had a tough time of it. Foley is an outstanding prospect from Cherry Hill, New Jersey. Highly recruited. Good size at 6'1", 200 pounds. An excellent arm. He's going to be an outstanding player. Jack McNeil is very high on him. And uh, it's interesting that he would give this red-shirted freshman a chance this early in the opening game of the season. Look at the yardage piled up by Pittsburgh, but they only have 12 points to show for that, and that's just first half. Foley on the long count as Jason Swept to the top side. Pitch goes to Frazier. Flashes his way to the outside, but can't pick up any running room. Nelson Walker was the man who tripped him up. God finished him off. Very little gain on the play, maybe one after the 23. Nelson Walker moved from inside to outside because of them going to a three-man front this year. Walker's got good speed. He's played here. He's a veteran uh, from Denora, Pennsylvania at 6'3", 230. Fine, fine athlete. Third down coming now for Boston College and nine from their own 23-yard line. They trail Pitt by a score of 12 to nothing. New quarterback for the Eagles in this possession, Glenn Foley. Foley going back, rushes on, man over the middle, complete, it goes to Green at the 37-yard line, and it's going to be good enough for a first down. Third down situation, Pitt came after Foley, they got right up in his face, but he got the ball off, and he got it to Green for the first down. Well, wait a minute, is it going to be ruled to catch? The officials now debating whether or not he trapped the ball or caught it. Is here comes Shirk. No catch. No catch. And now you're going to get it from the Boston College bench. Just look over there. Look at Jack McNell questioning the call of the officials. The pit players thought he trapped it. Ball looked like it was overthrown intended for Chimura, but went right into Green's hands. Let's see it again. There's the pass. There's two coming over the Green coming over as he hits the, hits the turf. It may have been if the ball bounced and he didn't have possession to slide over. Look like he had it. But the official was right there. Let's give it to Cole. Short punt again. Kushner pushes Israel back on the bounce. Israel gets out of one tackle. Got some running room. Cuts to the middle of the field and is brought down at the 35-yard line. Kevin Pearson made the tackle as he changed direction. A 40-yard punt, but a 28-yard return by Steve Israel. Is he exciting, and he got a great block on the corner, and once you get the corner, you got a chance, and with his speed, he had it and brought it back, and again, here we go. Watch this. Here's the bounce. He takes a chance by picking it up. Chamura, the tight end covering on this, just misses him here, but look at the block by number 42 on the corner. That was Vernon Lewis again, who blocked 
the punt in the end zone for a safety who made the key block to give Israel a chance to make that return. Israel coming back after tearing out his knee against West Virginia a year ago. That brings the hit offense back to the field again at BC territory at the 36. Back to throw, Van Pell. Lots of time, completes to Richard. Brought down at the 27-yard line, Pearson and Mahopic on the play with three minutes left to go in the first half. Turnover, big play. What do they do? They come out in the first play. They throw the football on you. Good call by Paul Hack at that time. He drops it off to his number one back, Kervin Richards in the middle. Breaks a couple of tackles, and Pitt is in complete control right now. But that's not a good sign. Israel, as we said, introduced knee last year and sat out most of the season. Getting his knee looked at on the sidelines. We hope to get an update on that situation. Second down and about one. Richards on the pitch. Scrambles to the outside, loses the football. But it'll be marked down at the 24-yard line, and he'll have enough for a first down. Good job by Matt Kelly that time coming in to make the hit. Fumble the ball forward, fortunately, for Pitt. But you do not get credit for where the ball goes out. You get credit for where you last had possession of it, and that was at the 27-yard line is where Kervin Richards last had possession of the football. Now the crowd is booing a little bit because they really don't understand that. Joe Shirk making sure he's spotted right there. Pittsburgh, obviously, having the ball a lot more. And those 42 plays, all plays, the Boston College defense has to spin out on the football. Had he crossed the line down. of scrimmage and fumbled the ball, that's where the new rule applies now, where the defense could have picked it up. But he has to get beyond that line of scrimmage. Third down and one to 27. The bow in the backfield, he gets the call. And he is ahead, close to the first down. Looks like his forward progress will take him down to the 25. It is a first down, Pittsburgh. you got to be impressed by Glenn DeVoe, the junior out of Cocoa, Florida. He's done a lot of things so far. Blocking, running the football, playing fullback and tailback. He's really come along, that junior, and he's a, he's a guy that, as I said earlier, he impressed Paul Hackett in preseason. And here he goes up over the top and knows where that, those sticks are to get the first down. First and ten, Pitt driving here with 2.14 left to go. First half of play at Pitt. Panthers leading Boston College 12-0. Richards inside, tries to get ahead to the 23-yard line. Driven back, Marinero is in on the stop. Matt Kelly helps out. Marinero has a cousin. I'm sure everybody will recognize it. Marinero played his football at Cornell and also in the pro ranks at uh, Minnesota with the New York Jets as you look over the shoulder of Matt Kelly. One of the leading tacklers for BC. His father was a former All-American at Yale. Grandfather was. 1920. Second down. And helped the throw. It is complete to Lionel Sykes, the tight end inside the 20. Brian Johnson brings it down. Dave Johnson, rather, at the 17. Spread the word. Here they moved the ball on the side. They've been running Kervin Richards, hitting him with the pass that time. He dropped back, sent two wide receivers up the field, ran his tight end underneath Sykes, hit him with the football. Good possession-type pass. Keeps the drive going. Good field position for Pitt. Timeout Pittsburgh on the field with third down and four. You're looking at a BC defense, as we've mentioned several times now, that's been on the field a lot. And it's got to be getting to them. And the versatility of the Pitt offense is starting to wear on them now. Pittsburgh now has two timeouts left. The announcers for this game are selected and compensated by JP Sports. This broadcast is a copyright presentation. Any use of this broadcast without the express permission of the University of Pittsburgh and Boston College is prohibited. Pittsburgh leading one year at Pitt. They've had some great quarterbacks here. Third and four. Big rush on Kelly blitzing. Pass complete. And it is going to be to Hagens, the fullback, who gets out of bounds for the first down. They mark him at the 12-yard line. That's great execution. A great catch by Hagens, but a heck of a pass here by the quarterback, Van Pelt. They try an inside blitz. They bring Kelly. He's all over him. He still delivers the ball, and it's perfectly thrown. Caught. Gets out of bounds. First down. Pearson in coverage for Boston College. First and 10. That can be very discouraging to a defensive team. They almost make the perfect play. They come up short. Out of the eye formation. Here's Richard. There's a hit in the backfield, and he's brought down quickly on the play by Jay McGillis. Flattened for a loss of one. That time Marinero came in as he sliced in. He made the hit initially to slow down Richards. Held on to him enough right there. And 
the finishing touches came. But he's always looking for the cut. He gives you that limp leg, and he's looking to break it. That time, he didn't have the opportunity. John Ravenna fished, uh, finished him off, but due to the work of that man, Jay McGillis, who made the hit behind the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play, second and ten. And helps the throw. Goes to the flats, Higgins with sure hands, but not much yardage. Thrown for a loss behind the line of scrimmage to the 16-yard line by Stolberg. And McGillis again, quick, coming up from, he diagnosed that play. That time they came up in a pro set, released Kervin Richards up the field and slid the fullback. Watch this, Richards will go to the right, he's going up the field. The fullback comes out here to the corner, Hagen. He delivers the ball over the cornerback, reads it perfectly, and makes the hit behind the line of scrimmage. Two big plays by the redshirt freshman, Jay McGillis. Gillis stops hit in their tracks, and they're looking now at third down and 14. Back at the 16-yard line. Another timeout taken by Pitt, looks like. Okay, your BC, you got 29 seconds left. It's 30, 14. What do you play defensively? Do you take the chance against Van Pelt and go man for man? Do you come up and play these receivers tight? This is the big test. Pitt has one timeout remaining. Boston College has two. We have 29 seconds remaining here in the first half. Pitt looking at third and 14 with a 12-0 lead in Boston College territory at the 16-yard line. Very emotional call right here for BC. If they can hold them here and force them, say, to go for three, they'll feel very satisfied. If they don't, it's going to be a long second half. They're going to really have to generate some offense. Their defense has had to do some very extraordinary things, hold at the one-inch line, and they have done it. Elsewhere, Penn State leading Texas 7-3. Hosea Hurd is into the ball game. Split twins to the top side with Orlando Truitt to the wide side of the field. On third and 14. Split backfield for Alex Van Pelt. Draw play to DeVoe. Diagnosing it, Brennan. And McGillis helps him in on the stop as he makes the gain up over the 15-yard line, down to the 12, a gain of five, and Pitt calls their final timeout. Well, interesting call. Third, long yardage, felt maybe we couldn't make it. Let's get the ball in good field position, come away with three points. That's the thinking right now. He Both runs. coaches very creative, trying to get defenses to respond to something they wouldn't expect, but Brennan has to get around the official to make the stop. That's that same umpire I was talking about. <laughs> okay. So this brings Kaplan into the ball game, standing back at the 19-yard line. That's where they'll mark the football. Hetzler to hold. And Kaplan, who is one for one this afternoon, one for two on the year. His first one was a 26-yard effort. He missed one from 40-plus against Ohio University a week ago. 22 seconds remaining. It's a special teams coach, Scott O'Brien. He's talking to him now, and BC's talking to themselves over there saying, hey, we've got to be ready for anything. They may try a fake field goal, but they've got to be ready. Is one of the real noted personalities in television right there, Joe Shirk. We've seen a lot of him over the last couple of years. <laughs> and especially this afternoon. They're waiting for some sort of indication. That's probably it. They've got a clock problem here, and that's what they're going to come over and talk to Paul Hackett about. Clock in the end zone shows 22. They both correspond. Now, will they start? Twenty nine yard field goal attempt here for Scott Kaplan out of the hold of Doug Hetzler. Jim Royal the long snapper for Pitt. Half is down it is up. And it is good. And Pitt steps out in front by a score of 15 to nothing with 19 seconds remaining Scott Kaplan his second field goal of the day this one from 29 yards out the sophomore out of Florida Coral Springs is home the sophomore at 6'1 180 pounds so he caps that drive Boston will take a look at scores from around the country we'll review last week's action and have a nice feature for you on the Walton family. Kick is a squibber but it's picked up at the 11 yard line by Sanders lots of run up the middle Brings it back to the 31-yard line. Clock will stop with 16 seconds, 13 seconds left to go in the first half of play, and BC will get the start of another series underway at any rate. And Foley returns to the huddle. 
Well, they made a decision. They, it may very well be that Foley will be the quarterback in the second half to see if he can generate something. His first pass, his first play was a pass completion. The official didn't read it that way. He'll come back and put the ball up here. Split twins. Green and Hilbert to the top side. And a wide out to the bottom. That is Chimura, his talented tight end. Looking over the middle, it is complete. And he hits Mike Sanders at the 48-yard line with six seconds left. Boston College now calls for a timeout. They have one remaining. 16-yard reception by Sanders. It looked like Prentice Wright had that ball. It looked like it went right through his hands. He's looking back and said, where'd it go? For a red-shirted freshman, the BC coaches have said this about Glenn Foley. He's very cool. He's very confident, very poised. And that's why I think he's in in this situation. They want to see what he can do. And there he is over-talking with... Jack McNell on the left and in the striped shirt. That's Dick Curl, the new offensive coordinator at BC. He used to be at Rutgers with Dick Anderson. And he's brought his offense here. The short control passing game, single back, utilizing backs out of the backfield, wide receivers, and the tight end. Glenn Foley returns to the huddle now for Boston College. Six seconds remaining in the first half. Pitt leading BC by a score of 15 to nothing. And Foley coming back to try to change that with one play here, and he'll have the best field position of the day that D.C. has enjoyed at the 46-yard line, 47-yard line of Boston College. There you see the time in the lower right-hand corner of your screen. One play for Foley. Steps up in the pocket and guns for the end zone. Green is not there. Pitt is. And it's taken in the end zone, I believe, by Vernon Lewis for a touchback. And the clock will end. Finishing the first half of September for Pitt. Play five of their games, almost half of their schedule this month. They're already 1-0. Sandro back, and here is Sanders at the five. Sanders gets up and making a nice tackle that time for Pitt. It's going to be Lex Perkins. 16-yard return for Sanders and gives PC their first possession of the second half in their own territory at the 21. Lexus Person, uh, Perkins, Jr., 6'3", 200 pounds. He's from San Bernardino, California. He's a junior college transfer, and they like him a lot. Foley returns at quarterback for Boston College. Toner behind him at fullback. There's Foley's chart, that interception on the last play of the first half of play. Hit lead, 15-0. Foley intercepted. Lewis Riddick, second one of the day, could be headed for a score. He's down inside the three. Foley had to help bring him down. Nelson Walker is down and hurt, but Riddick was the man who picked the pass off. Little sprint out action here looking. He got trips to this side. Three receivers just throws the ball too far for Sanders. There comes Riddick. Steps right up into play. Follows the flight of the ball. Gets down in close before Foley at least makes an attempt to bring him down inside the five-yard line, which he does. Tough break for the soft, for the redshirt freshman on his first play from scrimmage, but a big play by the big play guy who's been doing it throughout his career. Lewis Riddick, the senior out of Quakertown, Pennsylvania. His fifth career interception and his third this afternoon. However, that is dampened by Nelson Walker's injury. He's out on the field, helmet askew, and on his back being attended to by the pit training staff. Walker, of course, the senior linebacker out of Donora, Pennsylvania, moved outside to the outside linebacker position this year in the 3-5 scheme, and he, uh, he is down. It looks like it might be a, a lower leg injury. They're waiting before they move him. So we've got a timeout called by the officials here with 14.47 to go on the third quarter of play. Pitt leading Boston College. 15. Van Pelt brings the Pitt offense back on the field following Lewis Riddick's interception. Nelson Walker has been aided from the field of battle, the outside linebacker, and the only word we have is a lower leg injury, as Bob suspected, and we'll get more for you as the afternoon goes along. Four Boston College turnovers, all of them interceptions, and now Foley has two of them. First and goal at the three-yard line. DeVoe is the setback behind Higgins. He's got the football. And he noses his way down to about the one-yard line. Looks like Jay McGillis is one of those who have made the stop. McGillis has played a fine game of football so far. Played very well. They also have Dave Moore in the game who, who lines up in the backfield. He was a former fullback, moved to tight end because of the situation at fullback with Derek Lewis and uh, 
Ron Redman and Ron Redman, which we mentioned earlier, they've had to move people around, and that's the setup. Deep in the backfield is Dubow at the tailback position in the power eye set. Second and goal from the one. Two-yard gain by Devoe. Warren Hagen's running interference. Here comes Devoe, very close to the goal line. It looks like he's going to be maybe a half a yard shot. You've got to be impressed with the Boston College run defense today. They've done a good job here in this situation as they take over trying to defend from the two-yard line in. They're in a tough situation, but they're hanging tough in there against the run. And the man who made the stop, Ted Page. You see in the center of your screen, the redshirt freshman from Cherry Hill, New Jersey, who's converted from tight end to defensive end. Defensive linemen are a premium at Boston College this season. They've had a lot of injuries. Richards is in a tailback. Third and goal from the half-yard line. Van Pelt, Richards, and he stops short again. Ivan Caesar carries him down. Nice stop by Caesar. But the play was made again by the redshirt freshman cornerback Jay McGillis, number 31. Watch him come up on the top of the screen and force Richards to cut back inside. Big play there. Gives a chance for the pursuit and Caesar to come over to make a big play. That's three outstanding plays by McGillis. Brian Howlett helped him clean it up. McGillis, there you see him. Brockton, Massachusetts, a redshirt freshman, 5'9", 178 pounds. Fourth and goal inside the one-yard line. One setback for Alex Van Pelt. They tried to punch it in twice. Now they'll try to throw. Van Pelt to throw in the end zone. Incomplete intended for Truett. Tremendous job by the BC defense, stopping him with, from the two-yard line with four shots. Big job by the secondary that time. And now it's time for the offense to get going. That's the story we've told all day. They haven't done anything for him, but the defense did the job. They have played very tough. Two goal line stands inside the one on fourth down, and Boston College has held each time. Here they come out, single back, three receivers to this side with motion. Tight coverage, not open now. He just flies the ball up there. He's looking for Truett to come up with a great catch. He couldn't do it. First down, 99 yards away from Pater for Boston College with 12.43 left to go in the third quarter. They trail 15-0. Foley to Frazier. Gets hit at the point of attack, and Ricardo McDonald rides him down. Helped out on the play by Marcus Washington. You know, that injury to Nelson Walker is critical because already Curtis Bray, who has played there, has had problems. And Nelson Walker going down could create problems down the road for him. Let's hope it's not serious. He's had two knee problems there, as you see Frazier. Bounce to the outside. Not only that, Scott Boykin, who is also an inside linebacker, has been, uh, been brought back slowly after knee surgery. And he is not seeing action today. And there you see Nelson Walker laying on the sideline with the ice bag applied to the lower right leg. Second down, about eight from the two. Foley to throw. Over the middle, it is complete. And it is complete to Ray Hilbert. Nope, Reagan, fullback. The man who catches the ball, my mistake. Reagan, the fullback, can line up at fullback and also at tight end. That time he was at tight end. He comes in in certain situations. That time he just dumped the ball off, tried to get a little bit more breathing room. There goes Reagan out of the ball game. He's a junior out of uh, Ohio. 6'3", 234-pound player, played linebacker for him. They use him both ways. Third down, critical here for BC. Third down and about four. Off the road, seven-yard line. That's Frazier in motion and holding the throw. Quick pass oh. over the middle is picked off by Doug Hessler. His second pickoff of the day, and he's headed for a touchdown. A 15-yard score by Doug Hessler. And the only one to hit him was his home man, Fred is right after the score. His second interception of the day, the fifth interception by the pitch defense. They were looking for the tight end, Shavora. They were trying to hit him quick. He just dumped the ball off to him, and there was Hessler, the senior. And you'll see it right now. He's looking to his right side. Here's Chamora coming over. The ball was thrown over him. Good coverage on him by Prentice Wright, which permitted on the tip drill the ball to go to the veteran Hessler, who runs it in. A mistake. And those mistakes have hurt BC, particularly deep in their own territory. They have piled up here today. Five career interceptions for that man, and here's Kaplan for the point after. It is good, and it is Pittsburgh leading 22 to nothing. Four points from the defense. The Pitt Panthers flex their muscles with a pass interception. Back after this word from your local station. 
I could use some good news. American Express MoneyGram has a special offer. So what's the offer? Wire up to $500 for only $10. Great. But what if I've got an aunt in Fairbanks? 8,000 locations. Ooh. I bet it takes a while. 10 minutes or less. Decent. So if you're still wiring money the same old way, stop. Yeah, no kidding. So what do I have to do? Call 1-800-MONEYGRAM for the location nearest you. In 135 years, nobody's ever walked around in Levi's 501 jeans with their flying zip because in all that time, they've only come one way with this button fly. His buttons let the jeans fit so perfectly, it's no wonder that they've been around longer than any other jeans in the world. Um, what, is the world wrong? Could be. So, buy a pair of 501s, wear them for a month. If they're not the best fitting jeans you've ever owned, Levi's will refund your money, and the world will owe you an apology. Every day, Dr. Barbara Baker goes to work with Mandela. No, she doesn't work in foreign affairs. Mandela is a giraffe, and Dr. Baker is the new director of the Pittsburgh Zoo. She is the first female director of a major national zoo. Her mission is to double tourism and get the city residents excited about the Pittsburgh Zoo. Can she do it? Find out when we meet the new director of the Pittsburgh Zoo, Dr. Barbara Baker, up close Sunday at 1, right here on WTAE-TV. The Panther looks on, and he's pleased at what he sees, especially in the pit defense. They have accounted for this scoring here in the second half as Doug Hessler picks off a pass and takes it in for a touchdown from 15 yards out. And you know that the pit defense is different this year by alignment, and the reason it was different because of the injuries they suffered, the down linemen, and they had to go. They knew they had a strong bevy of linebackers. They brought in a new coordinator, and, they, and he brought with him a, a, a new scheme, a three-man front, which he moves sometimes to a four-man front, but basically they were trying to do get through spring practice because they didn't have enough down linemen. They had to use their linebackers because they had depth at. Unfortunately, they've had some injuries here, particularly Nelson Walker, that may change that a little bit. And Delisandro getting set to kick Frazier and Sanders. Frazier at the top of your screen, Sanders at the bottom, as the ball falls off the tee, so we'll have a slight delay. BC's eight possessions have not been good this afternoon. Five of them have ended at the Beck and call of an interception. One with a block punt for a safety. And the other two were punts. Just four minutes gone so far in the second half of play. And Pitt has made a statement with their defense with 22 points. In 1989, they intercepted BC four times. They got 20 points off their defense against Boston College, even though the Eagles held their offense and their rushing game in particular to only 77 yards. So for the third time, D'Alessandro battling the currents of air on the floor of Pitt Stadium, getting set to kick away. Frazier at the nine. Cuts to the sideline and a tackle by Glenn DeVoe at the 25-yard line. Boy, DeVoe has done it all this afternoon, hasn't he? DeVoe and Lewis, those two names you've been calling a lot, doing a bunch of things. But here's DeVoe, the fullback, the tailback, the pass receiver, the runner, and also playing on the special team. So he tells you a little bit about that 5'11", 190-pounder who has really been all over the field here today. He's out of Cocoa, Florida. Last week he had 59 yards rushing against Ohio University. This afternoon he's filled all of those roles that Bob mentioned and more. Now we have a timeout on the field to boot. Joe Shirk. DC, excuse me, Pitt called the timeout. Pitt didn't have apparently enough men on the field, so they decided that they needed timeout to get everybody. You know, coming into this season, Pitt uh, was ranked nationally by various uh, groups. Sporting News had him 13th in the country. USA Today at 17th, AP 18th, UPI 20th. Uh, pretty high when you think about it and you look at that schedule that they have to play coming up next week they go to Norman to play Oklahoma and we catch him on the 22nd with Syracuse that'll be a battle for supremacy in the east elsewhere Texas now has moved ahead of Penn State they have a touchdown and a two-point conversion to lead 14 to 7 game at State College and Richmond now leading Navy 10 to nothing first quarter at Annapolis in the baptism for George Chomp 
MC State leading Georgia Tech 13 to 7, a game in Atlanta this afternoon. They're in the third quarter there. Of course, Georgia Tech has design. Should Virginia or Clemson fall to in that conference? First and 10, Boston College now. Working out of their own 25 yard line. Foley shaken by two interceptions. To Toner. Toner moving people upfield. And he dances out of bounds at the 41 yard line. Single nice back, game. Single back in the backfield, only the fullback. Ed Toner, the veteran, senior out of Swampscott, Mass. Takes that ball and just on a slant play, carries the ball, gets it upfield, gets yardage, gets a first down. That's what they need. Some first downs and get a little confidence in what they're doing and better field position. Something they haven't had today. That's a great effort by Toner. This is the closest, or one of the closest uh, moves to midfield that Boston College has made today. Pitt has five interceptions. Their school record is six. Logged against Boston College back in 1977. Here's Foley on first down to Sanders. Sanders up over the 45 and headed toward midfield. He's brought down at about the 47-yard line. Gobb is in there. Wheatley is in on the stop as well. Terrence Wheatley, it looks like. No. That is going to be Derek Hicks as you look at Sanders coming back to the huddle. Pitt uses a lot of people on defense. They try to uh, revolve their defensive unit around 15 to 18 players. Injuries have forced part of that. Nelson Walker still on the sidelines. Second down and four for the gain of six by Sanders. Here's Toner again. Looks like he was going to break that one out in the open. Got tackled by Riddick. He's close to a first down. Maybe just inside pit territory. And Curtis Bray, the junior out of Monroeville, Pennsylvania, is lining up on that outside linebacker position for Nelson Walker. We know he's had some knee problems, but he was a two-year starter. Outstanding player, but hobbled a little bit. But he's in the ballgame right now. They're marking it very close to a first down, and looks like we'll see our first uh, call by the chain gang this afternoon as the crew of officials looking it over after Ed Toner's game. It looks like, Bob, that Boston College has just said, well, let's go back to the basics, get the fullback game going, and get our quarterback set. Unfortunately for Boston College, they haven't had a chance to show that by field position and turnovers. But BC really wants a ball control passing game. That's what they're looking for. That's what Dick Curl brings to this offense this year as we look at the measurement. And it's going to be that close. That close. That's right. Jack is, of course, going to go for it. But anyway, they're looking for less formation, less motion than they've had before, because they feel they, they really want to be a little bit more controlled in what they're doing, so they're doing less, and hopefully they want to do it better. Unfortunately, they haven't had that chance. A lot of single back in their offense, but basically a ball control passing attack. As you look down, here's their conversions. They haven't been in that position very often, but they haven't been very successful. The rate is a little higher on third and very, very short. Length of a credit card here. Here's the handoff. Goes to Sanders. Looks like he's got it. Weekly on the stop along with Sean Gilbert. You know, you know this quarterback is Glenn Foley, this red-shirted freshman who we're seeing a lot of right now. His dad, Ed Foley, was a starting quarterback for BC in the 60s. So the family thing that we've talked about with Pitt goes on on the other side of the football with Ed, Ed Foley's son, Glenn Foley, getting a shot here as a redshirted freshman in the opening game of the season for BC. You saw Sanders' numbers. Pretty impressive, but just not enough. Four carries is uh, not as many as they'd like him to have at this point in time. Foley with the play fake. Big rush is on, has a man open. Chamura taps it to himself. It's complete inside the 30, the deepest penetration of pit territory down to the 29-yard line, a 20-yard gain by Mark Chamura. Nice action there, a little play fake. This is called a naked. He comes off this play fake, and as he rolls out to the right, he flips his weight. There's pressure there, but he's got some poise, and he just delivers the football. Quick release, excellent control by big Mark Chamorro. We said about him, he was the leading pass receiver. He had more reception than any other tight end, and there's the notice. Right there, 47 last year. Any other tight end in the country. First and 10, Boston College. John Baker now playing left defensive end for Hamilton. Hand off now Sanders. Sanders to the 25 in the grasp of Sean Gilbert. Gain on the play of about four. Brings up second down and six with 9-12 left to go in the third quarter. Pitt leading Boston College 22-0. And, and BC's just trying to establish something. Get a little confidence, get this young quarterback built up because he's going to see action in the future. Get something going. 
try and get a score. Chad McNell looking on his 10th season. His record at Maine and at Boston College, 55-48 and one. Tough times lately, 10 and 23 in his last three. Four bowl bids, he's coached the Heisman Trophy winner. He sees his fullback all the loose inside the 15, down to the 12. That's Ed Toner, the senior. Nice job up front by the center, Mike Gradigan, the senior. And the right guard, Mark Rankin, made a hole. And the ball just comes right back here. Just drives up inside and makes the play, gets on the linebackers, and runs over people. Very durable, dependable football player, Ed Toner. 13 yards for Toner on the game. First down at the pit, 11 yard line. Toner, the long setback. He gets the call, bounces out the right, or left side. Riddick in pursuit, and Hetzler has to bring him down at the six-yard line, a gain of five. Single back offense, three receivers, give the ball to Toner. That time he kicked it a little bit outside. Doesn't have great speed to do it, but got some yardage out of it. Came up with plus yardage right here. Good move, breaks it to the outside behind the block of the tight end, Chamora. Runs through a couple of tackles. He's always been there, as we remember, in short yardage. They like to come to him in this situation. And they got to get a first down when they're in close to that goal line. Toner has 15 career touchdowns. Six carries today for 39 yards. He had 481 yards at three and a half a carry last year. Second down. About six. Standard. Can't get anything going. Ricardo McDonald is the man who stopped things up. John Gilbert, Doug Hetzler, and Craig Dobb come over to clean it. McDonald is so quick out of Patterson, New Jersey at 6'2", 230. He can hit. He's a dominant player. We haven't called his name much, but he's there, and that's the kind of play he can make. Penetration, adjusts, makes the tackle. No gain, third and five. Boston College inside the pit 10-yard line. 7.51 left to go in the third, and Pittsburgh leading. Boston College 22 0. Play fake Foley under heavy rush, throws it away. Intended for Toner. But what a rush by Wheatley and Bray that time. Both of them came. Wheatley from the inside linebacker position and Curtis Bray from the outside. And he just threw it away. Didn't have a chance. Uh, good call, tough pressure. That's what you need. And a young quarterback under that kind of circumstance is very hard to deliver. Bray trying to recover from knee surgery in the offseason to clean out some cartilage in the knee. And it is fourth down and five, and Boston College looking for anything on the scoreboard sends Sean Wright out for his first field goal attempt. It's a fifth G of 23 yarder out of the hole of the quarterback, Glenn Foley. Radigan will do the long snap this time in close. There's the kick, it is up, and it is good, and Boston College breaks the shutout. John Wright gets his first points on the Division I level, kicking for Boston College with 7.36 left to go on the third goal. Switches positions. Back there with Ricky Turner, the kick return team here now for Pittsburgh. DeVoe fumbles it into the end zone, and he'll get on it for a touchback. He'll be brought out to the 20-yard line. Glenn DeVoe. First opportunity in a kickoff return situation this afternoon, and Pitt will get the ball first and 10 from their own 20-yard line. One of the few times Pitt is starting way back in their territory. Got 80 yards to look at. They haven't been in that situation at all today. BC marched 11 plays, 68 yards, 23-yard field goal by Wright. Some big gains on the way by Ed Toner, a big pass from Foley to Mark Chamillo, the tight end. Van Pelt on first and 10, hands off to DeVoe, or rather this, yes it is, Glenn DeVoe out to the 33-yard line. Brennan brings him down again to 13. They say he's got speed and he's got quickness and he's got 4-4 speed. Watch this move as he breaks this thing outside. This is beautifully run. This is going to go inside, a little counter move. Now he gets that time. Number 31, McGillis, who's played very well, got caught inside, but he has the speed to put it on the corner and make yardage. Glenn DeVoe has really been a very important part of this football game for Pitt today. He's done a lot of things. Look at that, 13 rushes, 50 yards, and a touchdown. And an injured player on the field, it appears, Hosea Hurd is down. It's either Hurd or Eric Seaman. It's 85 or 86, who's down being attended to by the officials now in the Pitt backfield. It is Eric Seaman. Eric Seaman, the junior tight end, as we mentioned. His dad played here in the 50s out of Glen Mills, Pennsylvania. Outstanding blocker. 
Pitt has already lost the linebacker so far this afternoon. Nelson Walker, he's not returned to action yet, although he's not removed his pads that I can see. And Seaman now being checked, and he'll be helped to his feet. And the bell rung momentarily. 7.26 left to go in the third quarter of play. Pitt leading Boston College here by a score of 22 to 3. As Paul Hankett looks on, and Seaman comes off the field under his own power. That's good. So Van Pelt returns to the huddle after a 13-yard gain on Glenn DeVoe's carry, and it's going to be first and 10 from the 34-yard line. Kervin Richards is back as the tailback. Play fake. Van Pelt the throw to his fullback. And Hagens makes a nice catch three yards downfield at the 36. Good play fake looking for uh, number 88. Lionel Sykes, the tight end, who was trying to run up the sideline deep. He was covered by the cornerback, Williams. So he went to his outlet and he hit the fullback. Carl Hagens, who stepped in today, He's only a junior out of Randolph, Massachusetts. Stepped in to fill the void at fullback and makes the play. They got a lot of guys who are, are playing roles and playing them well. Look down the depth chart for Hagens. You'll find him fit. He's doing the job today. Here comes Richards. Richards gets corralled as he crosses the 35-yard line. Gets out to about 37. Third down and about four. That's Mike Marinaro from the nose position. He's called muscles on his team because he's a great weightlifter, as you know, but, but uh, Jack McNell likes him a lot. There he goes. There he is, Mike Marinaro. 274 pounds. Two tackles for a loss a year ago. Third down coming up for Pitt. They lead BC by 19. Midway through the third. Formation to Van Pelt, and he goes to the draw to Richards. Richards has running room and has the first down. Out to the 47 yard line, bringing him down. Pearson and also Brennan for Boston College. A 10 yard gain for Kervin Richards. He continues to reel in Elliott Walker on the all time pit rushing list. Beautifully set up. Nice little draw play here. Good block downfield by 51 Sestelli gives him a chance to break it back his quickness is balanced that's when he's very tough and now you see the balance in the offense there's Kervin Richards 87 yards today 87 he's closing in on that 100 yard mark and 120 will give him third of the all-time pit rush list. here's the pass up field and it is going to be complete to Truett at the 32 yard line great pass by Van Pelt through to a spot Truett came down stopped came back to the football got away from the defender and Van Pelt put the ball right there can't defend against that beautifully done watch this he pushes off the defender comes back he throws to the spot and there's an excellent excellent control keeps his feet in and Orlando Truett Five catches today, 101 yard. Last week against Ohio U, four receptions for 74 yards. You're going to be hearing his name a lot in the future here. Today. Started to come on in the late part of last season. First to 10, pit of the BC 33. Richard threads his way into the secondary. Loses the football, but Moore is there to pick it up at the 16 yard line. So it maintains possession. So discouraging to a defensive football team. But that time again, they were back to arm tackling. You can't do that with Kervin Richards. Watch this move. Little counter. There's the first one. 94 reaches for him. That's Lenz, the nose guard. He can't make it. And they come up. There's 28. You've got to wrap your arms around him. That's Charlie Brennan. Fortunately, Dave Moore is there to recover the football, keep the drive alive. And uh, BC's back is against the wall again with five minutes remaining here in the third quarter. Give Kervin 10 yards and then three yards on the fumble where Moore picks it up. First and 10, hit at the BC 17. Here is DeVoe. DeVoe on the counter, inside the 15, down to the 14. And Bob Picknell, or rather that is Lenz making the stop. And John Ravenna. Picknell may see some action as the third defensive tackle. Carl Lenz is junior out of Wilton, Connecticut. Coming into this ballgame, we mentioned how Paul Hackett wants to take advantage of the tailback position and run the football, and he's starting to do that more. We saw a lot of it. Today, we've seen it with Richards, of course, and DeVoe, and he's got the chance to get the ball back deep to these guys and let them make their cuts. That's basically what he wants to do. 60% of the time, he wants the tailback carrying the football. Second and seven on the 15, and held over the middle, complete. 
to Hagens, his fullback inside the 10, down to the seven yard line. Well, if he's the fifth fullback, he certainly is catching like he wants to be the first. And that time they were looking for him all the way. This is a setup pass, watch him come right out of the fullback position, slip right in the middle, turn and wait, and there he is. Let the linebackers clear out. Get the ball, they're in close, they want possession, they want to keep first downs, they want to get in the end zone. Looking at number 83, Dave Moore, who's played a key role as tight end, as fullback today. They keep him in the game, got three tight ends in the ball game, put Moore in the, in the wing, and you can use him in motion or as a block. Third and inches, hit leading 22 to three. Time to thread his way back to the line of scrimmage as the bow is gonna be close to the first down, may have come up shy as he slipped, approaching the line of scrimmage. Pahopa in on the stop along with Jay McGillis, and it's time for a measurement, it looks like. McFitt has had a few problems inside the 10-yard line, inside the 5-yard line today, not really cashing in, I'm sure it's very important for them to get a first down now. To get in the end zone. Boston College has stopped them twice inside the 1 with great plays today. Jay McGillis made one, Tom McManus made another. 3.28 left to go in the third quarter. The measurement coming up. The sticks are out. They measure Glenn DeVoe's progress toward a first down. And they are going to be shy of about six inches. So they are going to go a fourth down situation. And the crowd is cheering because they're going for it. <laughs> That's the reason. Kaplan stays off the field on fourth and inches inside the 10 of the six yard line. Paul Hackett says at some point in time his team needs to punch across one of these exactly fourth and one situations. Okay, he's got uh, Hagen's in the ball game at fullback. Again, three tight ends in the offense. And the deep back is Kirvin Richards. And that helped with all of that machinery. will go straight ahead calling his own number. Very close to the first down. He needs the six. He looks like he's pushed the ball past that. He has first and ten, the indication by the official, and it is first and goal for the Pitt Panthers. Running up behind Chris uh, Sestelli, the starting center, the sophomore at 6'3", 255. As you know, he came in last year, came on so strong, he gave Dean Caliguay a chance to be moved to another line position. Sestelli is really the anchor of that offensive line, along with the right guard, Jeff Christie, and the right tackle, Scott Miller. Caliguay has moved on to the 49ers, where he's on the injured list as the season starts. Here's Richards, down to the five, and he is hit by Fahopek. He's driven back. BC's been very, very tough against the run down in here close. And Fahopek, the sophomore linebacker, came up and made the hit. Held it to a very short game. Well, Richards may pass the 100 yard mark today, but he'll have worked it. Fahopek is extremely quick and aggressive as a sophomore out of Dover, New Hampshire. Second down and goal from the five yard line. Two and a half minutes left to go in the third quarter. Pitt leading BC 22 to 3. Richards headed for the end zone. Oh. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. Great effort. Great effort by Kerbin Richards here. He gets hit a couple of three times right there. Here's the first one from the side. Again, in the arm tackle. 25 comes up from the secondary. Good to, to try and make the hit. But he was determined to get it in the end zone. And that's why he's an All-American and a Heisman Trophy candidate. 17th career touchdown for Kerbin Richards. And his first of the afternoon. Kaplan keeps the point after. It is up and it is good. And Pitt now moves out to a 29-3 lead over Boston. Major intersectional test for them. And then they have Syracuse in two weeks, and, and we'll be with them. And Syracuse, CBC next week against Ohio State. All recovered by Sanders. Brings it out, past the 20, and driven out of bounds, down at the 25-yard line on the tackle, Bobby Boykin. 26-yard return for Mike Sanders. NBC back in operation. There's Bobby Boykin, number 17, who made the hit on the run. So the Pitt defense takes the field one more time. They've had a fine day today, picking off five Boston College passes, one short of a team record. Foley hopes not to go into the record books as he has Frazier in motion in the backfield. Big rushes on. 
Gets away from the hands of Hamilton. Caught by Toner. Toner at the 30. Toner driven out of bounds at the 31-yard line, maybe the 32, and flattened over the bench down on the track turf here at Pitt Stadium. It's a gain of six for all that. Great effort by Toner here. Watch this. Drop back action. He slides off to the right side now, comes back over the middle as pressure on the quarterback Foley. He gets it off to him, makes the hit. Now look at him. In midfield here, he puts the ball in his left arm, in his left hand, so that he can use his right arm to protect, and he gets onto the sideline. A great effort by Ed Toner. And there, he came up. Okay. He's all right. Headed to the sidelines. Frazier, the lone setback now on second and four. He gets the handoff. Tries to find the hole off right tackle, but it quickly closes off thanks to the efforts of Keith Hamilton and Craig Goff. Hamilton, a youngster out of Lynchburg, Virginia. Goff, of course, the veteran. Linebacker core from Bethel Park, Pennsylvania. Moved from outside to inside. We've already said that his father, Art Gobb, played at Pitt back in the late 50s. He was uh, starting in five games last year and had it was second in tackles with 89 last year. Technical engineering major also, so he's put it all together. Third down and short. Third and two of the 33. Run, run, run. The Boston College. Foley to the flats. Complete to Green at the 41-yard line for a first down. That's a quick pass. He's got to hit it because the defender is coming up right away, and we know who that is. That's Lewis Riddick coming up to make the hit. It's a good concentration by Green to handle that football, and a good pass by Glenn Foley to get it to him. Green coming out of the ball game now. Swepson replaces him. He sat out last year. He's speedy. He's got good hands, as we saw, out of Somerville, New Jersey. And he's one of the guys that has to develop in the course of the season for BC to put together some type of a wide receiver uh, passing there. First down and 10, Boston College at their own 41. Final minute of play here in the third. Foley scrambling for his life, and he'll not get away with it. He's sacked back at the 30-yard line. Big Sean Gilbert leads the charge. Terrence Wheatley is also in on the play. Lots of pressure they came after him, and that's what uh, Fred Van Oppen wants to see. He wants to see that kind of pressure, and they just bowled over people. But Gilbert, 91, look at how strong he is, and he just comes in clean. That's 300 pounds moving around out there. He makes the final hit. He is one heck of a prospect. Well, the key is he's not only big, but he has mobility, he has speed. He sat out last year to get things straight academically. Comes here as a sophomore, and he's ready to play. Second down and long yardage, a loss of 11 on the play. Gilbert back in pass formation, but a flag stops the play. So the penalty will delay things further. No shirt coming out to make the call as Boston College has uh, had a hard time getting out of the blocks this afternoon. Dead ball foul. They're looking for seizure. Defense. Five yard penalty. Let's see it again. Looks like movement before the ball. Yeah, it looks like they've got the, the quarterback trying to get out of there before the snap. And that might be his inexperience. That could be the foul. Ricardo McDonald lost that helmet there for a moment. Ken Radinick is in at the inside linebacker spot. Moves up there on the left side. Second down and long, and the third quarter is about to come to an end. So the third quarter ends. It has not been a good one for Boston College, but Pittsburgh coming away with a 29-3 lead through three quarters of play. And they've got Boston College backed up in a second and long situation when we come back with the final quarter from Pitt Stadium. So stay with us. Pitt leading Boston College 29-3. The thing about roads is they often come with bumps. The thing about the Infiniti Q45 Performance Luxury Sedan is it comes with all the amenities. Lots of bumps, all the amenities. It's a bump, a bump when you don't even feel it. A simple demonstration on how long AC Delco parts can help your car last. How long 
Can AC Delco Auto Parts help your car or truck last? A good long time. AC Delco. It's like buying time. J.P. Sports coverage of great American independent football continues as Boston College and head coach Jack McNell try to avenge last season's heartbreaking loss to Ohio State. For John Cooper's Buckeyes, the key to their success starts with an intimidating defense and ends with an offensive attack anchored by running back Scotty Graham. Boston College hosts Ohio State Saturday. Man you see there in the blue jacket is Fred Von Oppen. He's a defensive coordinator here at Pitt. He's a man just brought in under the tutelage of Paul Hackett. He's got a great history as a defensive coach. He's coached under Tom, Tommy Prothrow at UCLA, defensive coach at Virginia Tech at Oregon, spent most of his time recently at Stanford, and the architect of a new defensive scheme, a very uh, aggressive off, uh, defensive scheme and an odd man front. Odd man front, three down linemen occasionally go to an even man front, but they like to bring the linebackers, put pressure on you. And he's the guy that was brought in here to do it. And he's got a great attitude. He's got a great way of uh, He really keeps you going. He says it's the defensive lineman is so young that only one of them has his permanent teeth and only one of them shaves. Second down and long yardage now. Boston College sitting back at their own 26. Foley to throw. It is complete. He's out there for his tight end, Chimura. Gets a little bit of running room, about seven yards. Out over the 30-yard line to the 32. John Baker, actually Marcus Washington, is in on the stop with Craig Goff. Real test for Glenn Foley because now they know he has to throw the ball. And uh, they're going to put pressure on him. So the, the young red-shirted freshman is really getting a, a good indoctrination today. Look at that. Turnovers, 5-1. to one. Favor. Five to one, yards. poor field position, and all those things add up, and that's why they're trailing 29 3 here in the fourth period. There's 200 more yards total offense this afternoon. Pass by Foley, complete out of the flats to Ray Hilbert. Nice pass and catch. That was really well done. He stayed in the pocket, he waited, there was pressure on him, and he gave Hilbert. The veteran receiver from Cincinnati, Ohio, a chance to come down and get into the middle, into the seam, and he delivered the ball. It was well thrown and well, well caught. Len Foley. You see right now because he's getting a lot of play. Richard Allen comes back in at nose guard for Pittsburgh. Veteran, one of the veterans in there. Fourth down, four to go. BC going for it. Down 29 to three. Blitz on. Cobb rushing hard, but the pass complete to Green for the first down. Green still on his feet at the 31-yard line for his brought down by Sean Gilbert. A gutsy call by B.C. Gutsy call by B.C. An excellent read by the quarterback, Foley. He read man coverage, and he got at the ball outside to the wide receiver, Green. He also got hit on that play. He took a big hit, but that was well done. Big rush was on that time. Craig Cobb was moving right up the middle and was unhindered as he blitzed through. 13-27 left to go in the football game, and it is Pittsburgh leading Boston College 29-3. Foley with three interceptions, but his percentage otherwise is pretty good. First and 10 at the pit, 30. Toner. Toner still on his feet and knocked out of bounds. Just shy of the first down marker at the 21-yard line. And Toner's had a fine second half. Toner's a durable, dependable, proven football player. And here he is. It's a single back in the offense. Looking to come in inside, but he's got enough quickness to bounce it on the corner. Gets a good block out there from Mark Tremora, the tight end. Gives him a chance to get up the sideline. We talk about Boston College's running attack. We talk mainly about Sanders and Frazier, but it'll probably be Toner probably logging the best stats of the day as he heads to the sideline. Well, they're pulling on his experience. He's been around, he's been under pressure, and he's done the job for him. Second down and inches. And a timeout on the field, an official timeout with 13.08 left to go. They stop play as they bring it up to the line. Clock problem. It's corrected. Foley hands off to Frazier. And Frazier surges ahead. He's got the first down inside the 20. Frazier has just stood up there at the 16 yard line. Ketzler and Prentice right in on the tackle. Good job of blocking by the tight end, Chamor, and the right tackle, Jovanovich, who, uh, as we know, 
Started a lot as a sophomore last year. Number 72, big kid, 6'5", 289. Ivanovich made the hit and gave Fraser a chance to squeak in there and get the first down. Had a five and a half yard average, over a thousand yards last season for Boston College. Foley throwing to the flats and overthrows Andre Green, covered by Riddick at the five yard line. I think he read the coverage well that time. Riddick came over, covered tight on number two, the wide receiver Green, so he just threw the ball over his head and put it out of bounds. There's Glenn Foley. Cherry Hill, New Jersey. He's had a pretty good tradition of quarterbacks at Boston College. He's had some quarterback controversy over the last three or four years, and Jack McMell truthfully wanted to try to avoid that this season. He prefers to view it as competition, but usually it turns into controversy. Second down and 10. Draw goes to Toner. Toner picking his way over the 15. Down to about the 13-yard line. Getting back to the controversy that we've talked about, it's always been because he's played more than one quarterback, as we see here, running a little draw action or delay action here. Toner gets hit behind the line of scrimmage but manages to break up and get some positive yardage. But basically what, what Mike, what uh, Jack McNell is saying is that he, does, he, he doesn't mind having two quarterbacks who can play. And he doesn't look at it as a controversy. As you said, he's competition. Third and seven on the 13. Boston College trailing here, 29 to three. Movement before the ball. That was the left guard, Barczynski, number 69, who jumped before the snap. But getting back to the point, I think after the last couple of years and what he's gone through with his quarterbacks. Offense. Still third down. I'm sure that Jack would like to settle on one quarterback. That would give continuity to it. And what you're seeing here is a chance perhaps for a guy like Glenn Foley to step up and become that man. Willie Hicks, of course, came into this season. He, he proved himself at the, the, the end of last year. He's a scrambler. Maybe not quite the passer that Foley is, but he also can create them. So it's going to be very interesting as we watch BC uh, progress through the season. I don't think we've seen the last of Willie Hicks. Third penalty today for Boston College. A backed up third and 13. Big rush on. Throwing over it to Chimura. Incomplete is Foley. That time Foley did not get set. He released the ball, and he releases the ball a little bit high. That was poorly thrown. Good coverage, but he just put that ball in an impossible situation for Tremor to make the catch. So it's fourth down, and the kicking unit comes on. Sean Wright, who already has a field goal to his credit so far today. Ken Abrams putting the pressure on. Todd Kipkin looking very good this series. 36-yard kick now for Sean Wright, who has a 23-yarder to his credit midway through the third. Out of the hold of Foley. Low snap. He gets it away, and it is good. That's a great kick. Bad snap. Foley got it back to him, put it up for him, and, and he stood right in there with him and made the kick. So Sean Wright. Gets another three on the board, and with 11.33 left to go in the fourth quarter of play, it's Pitt 29, Boston College 6. In the beginning, there's the luxury of just sitting still in the Infinity Q45. Time enough to consider the numbers. 278 horsepower, 4.5 liter V8 engine. Then those numbers are translated into 0 to 60 in 6.9 seconds, at which point you only have time to consider that wow is an involuntary reaction of pure pleasure. One day there was just too much gray. I thought, should I or shouldn't I? I didn't. I was afraid it might look phony. I wanted natural looking color, and I wanted to do it right, with no pouring and mixing. Nobody else could give me what I wanted until Clairol Option Instant for Men. I figured if it's from Clairol, I could trust it. I could. I went from gray to my natural looking color in five easy minutes. My hair looks great, feels great. When I look in the mirror, I don't see gray. I see me. Do it right with Option, also in gradual formula.
Welcome back to Pitt Stadium on a sun splash day in early September. Pittsburgh leading Boston College, as you see, 29 to 6 in our Great American Independent opener. Boston College having all sorts of troubles with five interceptions. Next week, we see the Eagles again against another intersectional national rival, Ohio State. Ohio State playing Texas Tech this afternoon. Hey, Boston College has their work cut out from with their schedule. But the one thing about Jack Bicknell, if you look at his record, he's pulled some surprises at home against major college teams. And we, we've been part of that, thinking back to Tennessee and teams that he's defeated up there. So he played very tough against Ohio State last year out there. It'll be interesting to see him next week. Came back from a 31-7 deficit to lose 34-29. And Sean Wright kicks one out of the end zone. Bring it back to the 20-yard line. Nice kick by Wright. When you talk about national teams and national schedules, of course, Pitt has been playing one for a long time. We talked a little bit early on about the fact that they go out to Norman, Oklahoma next week. But when you look down their schedule, they got the likes of Notre Dame, Miami, Penn State. And, uh, you know, are they capable of being nationally ranked? And you got to say, of course they are. Well, everybody thinks enough of them in the preseason to rank them anywhere from 13th to 20th, depending on your preseason poll. And I think the key is they do have the operator at quarterback. They've got the backs. They've got the potential receivers. The key is injuries. Can they stay clear of them? Because they're kind of thin in the offensive line and in other positions. They just can't afford to have those injuries. If they can stay fairly healthy, they're going to get better each week. Here's Glenn DeVoe. More depth at the tailback position. He moves it out to the 25-yard line. And, of course, they've accomplished a lot this afternoon, despite the fact that their number one fullback is out with an injury. Their number two fullback is out for a one-game suspension. Their number three fullback was out with an injury. And they were down to their fourth fullback today, and he did a very nice job. But what they came back to was when the running game was not going early on, they could throw the football. And that's something they'll always be able to do because of that number 10 right there. Alex Van Pelt brings about second down and five after DeVoe's five-yard game. Richards, or rather DeVoe once again, surging toward the 30. Goes down on the grasp of Ivan Caesar from Boston College. That's another four-yard gain. He'll be very close to the first down to bring up third down and short. Van Pelt today, 18 completions, 24 attempts, 182 yards, only one interception. Had a touchdown called back. That's right. Third and less than a yard from the 29-yard line of Pitt. Day four in motion. DeVoe the handoff, stopped at the line of scrimmage and a hard hit there by Kevin Pearson, also John Stolberg, and he didn't get the first down. And the BC defense continues to hang in there and hit. They've been hitting all day on the run. They've done a good job. I mean, there's kind of, it's kind of discouraging to look at BC and, and think of the position they've been put in, the fact they haven't really had much offense, but I think this club will get better as they go on. And they'll have to settle on a quarterback, but they'll get better as they go on if they can keep their defense together. For the first time today, Brian Greenfield, who kicked all of last season with a broken leg, his plant leg was broken. What he plants with, the tibia was broken. And he gets it away. Average 47 yards as a junior college player. Gets it to Frazier. Frazier dances away to the 43-yard line. Nice little return on the play. A 36-yard punt for Greenfield and 11 yards back in the other direction for Frazier. BC comes back with the ball. Jim Royal making the stop. So Boston College's offense takes to the field with 9.29 left to go in the fourth quarter and their work cut out for them. We'll be back after this word from your local station. This could be your last chance to make the deal of the year. On a 1990 Mazda protege, the 90s are going to make room for the 91s. Get your choice of air conditioning or automatic transmission at no extra charge. Save up to $785. And there's more. Ask your Mazda dealer for the best deal now. Hurry, it's your last chance. At these local Mazda dealers now. Levi's 501 jeans. No other jeans in the world fit this way because they're not made this way. First, the special Levi's denim actually conforms to your body. Then, this button fly lets denim do what denim ought to do. Fits you perfectly. Skeptical? Okay, buy a pair of 501s. Wear them for a month. If they're not the most comfortable jeans you've ever owned, they'll refund your money. But, you'd have to give up your 501s. <laughs> 
September 1991. That's when your first payment will be. If you buy now during Dream Waterbed's No Payments Till 1991 sale. Enjoy a full year without payments on every Dream Waterbed in stock. 365 days of incredible comfort free. If you're on the market for a waterbed, daybed, or bedroom suite, now's the time to buy payment free for a full year. Sleep now, pay later at all 16 Dream Waterbeds locations during our incredible no payments till 1991 sale. Welcome back to Pitt Stadium. Steve Martin along with Bob Cassiola, JP Sports bringing you great American independent football. And right now with 929 left to go on the fourth quarter of play, Pitt leading Boston College by a score of 29 to 6. The Eagles have just returned. Brian Greenfield punt. This is where they start first and 10 at their own 44. Sanders in motion, the handoff to Toner. A fine second half, he tries to get outside and does. Breaks it out to a yard shy of midfield. A gain of five on the play brings up second down and five. Penn State, close one. They're playing at home against Texas. They're ranked 21st, Texas unranked, trailing. Maryland ahead of West Virginia at halftime. Kind of a surprise there. You know, a lot of people talk about Major Harris being out, but I think Don Nealon's more concerned about a young offensive line. Tech ahead of North Carolina State. That's a close one also in the fourth period, 21-13. Navy's come back with a 10-point deficit to lead at halftime, 14 to 10 in an apple. You're going to find George Chop to be able to throw the football quite different than what Navy's been doing in the wishbone. Tennessee having their way in Starkville today, 33-7 in the third quarter of that SEC game. We're in the fourth quarter here at Pitt, and it is second down and five for the BC Eagles. Hilbert is split wide to the bottom. Sanders the setback for Foley, who'll throw. The pass is intended for Chamura. It's deflected once. Reagan couldn't come up with it, and it goes incomplete. Great coverage, tight coverage, and he threw into the coverage. He's very lucky he didn't have another interception. Pitt now on third down will get five new bodies in there. Fred Von Offen is calling for the troops to come in and help out as they go to a nickel defense on third down. Against the nickel look, BC, nickel look meaning that extra defensive back, BC's looking to come in and automatic right on the line of scrimmage if they read it. And that's what he got right here. Third down and five. Yard shy of midfield. BC trailing 29 to 6. Foley out of the pocket. Throws up field. Complete for Hilbert, but he... Dropped it as he got tackled. Didn't have it long enough to call for the completion. Flooded the zone here down on the sideline. Hilbert came back to make the catch. It was well thrown by Foley. The pass was there, but he just didn't hold on to it. Riddick made the <laughs> jarring hit. Many times you may not get hit by him right away, but you know he's around, and that's what happens with many of these receivers. Ray Hilbert found that out. <laughs> and Boston College forced to kick again. Bill Kushner. Kirshner gets away a punt. It's short. Rolls out of bounds at the 21 yard line. That's a 30 yard kick for Bill Kushner. And it's where Pitt will take over first and 10. Alex Van Pelt trotting back out onto the field with his offense. Got some people in that offensive line now. Now a new quarterback comes out, Scott Stark is into the ball game now for Pitt. So Alex Van Pelt on the sidelines having accomplished most of the mission here so far this afternoon. And Stark back up. Right across the line you've got some uh, Mark Feely is now in at left uh, tackle. A junior college kid out of Orange Coast in California. Gorgeski at left guard and the Lazio is the center. And off goes to Hagens, the fullback. He gets up over the 25-yard line, brought down by Johnson and also for Hovick with Ivan Caesar after a two-yard game, brings up second down and eight. Caesar's a story, started at an offensive end and then asked to be changed over to defense out of the Virgin Islands. Last year he had 64 solo tackles. Uh, just a, one, of the, one of the best outside linebackers around, and he's played a lot of football for BC and had a very, very strong preseason. He's played a lot of football today. That defense has been on the field a lot. Second down and eight. Pitt. Their own 25. Starks hand off to Richards. Richards moves ahead to the 29-yard line before he's flat to keep the Richards watch up because he's closing in on 120 yards. He's got 112 right now. He's eight shy of passing Elliott Walker to become third on the all-time Pitt rushing start. 
And now the crowd comes to its feet because a man that uh, was their quarterback two years ago before academic difficulties sidelined him for a year is back in the ball game. Darnell Dickerson. And he deserves a lot of credit. He had his problems academically. A lot of people never thought he'd come back, but he did it. He did what he had to academically to come back to school, and he's back here. He just reported in the preseason. He wasn't here for the spring. And they're, they're playing him at a wide receiver. They're playing him at a wide receiver. He's just learning the plays. So don't kid yourself. Somewhere down the road, you're going to see that kid at quarterback. You're going to see him do some things for him. Because he was an outstanding athlete here a couple years ago. But Darnell Dickerson is back. Head ball foul. Delay of game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. So instead of third down and five, it's third and ten as the ball moves back to the 23-yard line. Scott Stark, the uh, backup quarterback out of Mission Vallejo, California. We saw a little bit of him last year. He's got a good, quick release, intelligent football player. He's got the size at 6'2", 195 to play. And Darnell Dickerson had a baseball career going at one time, played in the minor league system of the Kansas City Royals. Stark hands off now to DeVoe, and he gets up over the 25-yard line. What a workhorse DeVoe has been. He's building it fullback, building it tailback. Played on special teams. Outstanding job for him this afternoon. 7.05 left to go in the fourth quarter. Pitt leading Boston College 29-3. Looking at fourth down, and that brings Brian Greenfield into the ballgame. Greenfield for only a second punt of the afternoon. Back deep to receive is Tim Frazier. The lone setback for Boston College. Flag on the play. Good line drive. Drives Frazier back. Takes a big hit roll. Frazier fields at the 22. Driven out of bounds, but let's see what the flag is. A 52-yard punt for Greenfield, but a flag may call it back. They feel Greenfield, because he was hurt last year, really didn't see his potential, but they believe he can be one of the outstanding punters in the country. And that time, he just kicked beyond the coverage. He just kicked over the safety's head. Great job. 52-yard kick, and let's see what the penalty is going to be. It's all going to come back, though. It's going to go against Pitt. It's too bad for Greenfield. His longest punt last year was 66. He averaged 41.6 a punt with a broken leg. He thought it was a shin splint problem. There he is. He rested it, had it taken care of over the season. Averaged 47 yards a kick in junior college. There he is, a senior out of Sherman Oaks, California. Illegal formation, offense, five-yard penalty, fourth down. So they're going to ask Greenfield to kick another 52-yarder. Fifth penalty against Pitt this afternoon for 40 yards. And that's a change. Pitt has been plagued by penalties in years past. And, and while there haven't been many today, they have reared their heads at most inopportune times for Pitt, but they've overcome them. Leading here, 29-6. Okay, Greenfield back. Big rush on. He cloned it. He drove Frazier back inside the 10. And it is going to be down. Did he get it in time? No, it's a touchback. It's a touchback, but it sure is going to help his average. <laughs> 79 yards on the kick for Brian Greenfield. The appreciation of the crowd pours forth, and with 6.21 left to go on the fourth, it's Pitt leading B.C. 29-6. The street goes up, the street goes down. The Infiniti M30 luxury sports coupe reads the road like it wrote the book. The street goes down. The street goes up. And you settle back in the plush leather and go, this is fun. suppliers of aviation fuel. At 300 airports around the country, we supply the fuel and help keep the airlines humming. BP.
In a civilized society, a personal grooming lapse can result in a mortifying loss of station, so it behooves one to emanate the proper air. But with Right Guard Sports Stick, one gets maximum protection, and with a plethora of ambrosial aromatics, it is virtually impossible to pick up the wrong scent. Well, off to the foxes. Right Guard Sports Stick. Anything left will be uncivilized. They've been playing football 100 years here at Pitt, and no one has punted the football longer than Brian Greenfield just did. This is a new Pitt record, 79 yards, and he just drills this thing over Fraser's head for the second time. He lets it go, and it just gets into the end zone. Went 60 in the air. <laughs> there he is. Still smiling over it. <laughs> well, he deserves it. He went through last year. Oh, my goodness. He's got 10. Thought it was a shin splint. Turned out to be a broken leg. All right, BC on offense now with Foley. He's been in command here since late in the second quarter. When he replaced Willie Hicks. Looking into the sun. Looks downfield. Has a man open. It is complete to Green. Green has been a featured receiver of both quarterbacks this afternoon. He's complete out to the 38-yard line. An 18-yard gain for Andre Green. One of the positive signs you got to take away from this game of your BC is Andre Green, the junior, catching the football, coming across the middle. That's his fifth catch, 63 yards, and catching it in traffic. And also that the red-shirted freshman quarterback, Glenn Foley sat in there, poised, and waited for him to come open. Green from Somerville, New Jersey. Back to throw. It is complete. This time to the tight end, Shimura. And Shimura gets up over the 40-yard line, out to about the 43, gain of five. Hard tackle on the play that time by Sean Gilbert. And there's Shimura. 47 catches a year ago. Foley now calling the plays right on the line of scrimmage. No huddle. They started the game this way, never had a chance because of field position to do much with it. Draw play, goes to Frazier, tries to pick his way through. Baker and Bray are the man who corral him as he makes his way back to the 45-yard line. He might have gotten a yard, and it brings up third down. 5.25 left to go in the game. Pitt leading Boston College 29-6. to six. Glenn Foley looks on. Going without a huddle. Once again, Bob said first, first drive they did this. With mixed results, they wound up punting after three downs. Trying to get something going here on third down. Tone of the lone setback, Foley to throw. Stands in the pocket and delivers to his tight end, Shimura, at midfield. Good enough for the first down. One of the reasons you go without a, without a huddle is the fact that that time, that, that prevents the defense to make the substitutions they need in certain situations. So they may want to get somebody in in a run situation or a pass situation and can't do it because they don't have enough time to do it. First down at midfield. 4.45 showing on the game clock. Back to throw again is Foley. Complete to Hilbert. Driven out of bounds by Riddick at the 37. A gain of 13. Going to the short passing game there. No huddle. Short drop. Can't put too much pressure on him. Gets the ball on the sideline. Riddick still playing like there's no score. He's tough. He's uh, everywhere. Had a great day today. Corral two interceptions. Hetzler's got two. Vernon Lewis has one plus a blocked punt. The defense has come up with some big plays today. Back to throw again. Foley throws out of the pocket as a man. And it is interference as Camara goes for the ball. Interfered with by Prentice Wright. But we've got a flag up here by the line of scrimmage so it can go either way right now. We'll await that call. Perfect example, Prentice Wright, of what you call face guarding that time as he was up in his face all the way down the field. Could never find the football, never looked for it. So we await the call on the penalty back at the line of scrimmage, actually behind it at the 43. It's going to come back. Illegal formation, offense, pass interference, defense, no play. So kills the play and makes it first down again at the 37-yard line. Stops the clock with 4.33 left to go on the football game. Austin College was down, a bundle to this team two years ago in Boston and came back, but 23 wasn't the difference. It was a 17-point difference in that ball game. Draw play to Mike Sanders. Sanders can't get loose. Gobb makes sure he makes no more than one, maybe two, down to the 35-yard line. And it brings up second down. No huddle again for the Eagles as Glenn Foley brings into the line. Right, right, right. 
back to throw. Once again, it is incomplete. Intercepted by Craig Gobb. Tipped by Marcus Washington, and Gobb picks it up. The sixth pass interception of the day for the fifth defense, and that ties a school record. Mixed up there between the quarterback and the receiver. That's a time pattern. He was throwing to a spot. The receiver wasn't there. Nice job defensively, and the linebacker, Gobb, who works so hard inside, makes the play, comes up with a nice interception here. Watch this. Right there. Picks the ball off. Marcus Washington got his hands on it to keep it alive. As you see Foley throw again. He's looking on the outside there for Hilbert, the wide receiver. Threw the ball a little bit too inside for him. Big play. And Abrams is hoping something good drop, and he might get a chance at it. Van Pelt's back in the ball game under center at quarterback for Pitt. Play faking. He's going down now. He wants Dickerson. The receiver falls down. McGillis in coverage with Charlie Brennan. Good job by McGillis that time. They're trying to get... They're trying to be a, a confidence builder here for Darnell Dickerson. They're trying to hit him deep on the fly up the sideline. But McGinnis stayed with him stride for stride. The ball was thrown a little bit short. Interesting to see that uh, Paul Hackett has brought Van Pelt back into the football game with 3.58 remaining on the clock. I think, I think it's for the sole purpose of probably delivering the ball to Darnell Dickerson. And doing as you say, building his confidence. Second down and 10. This time he goes to Richards. Richards bounces to the outside. Richards is still in the ball game. Over 100 yards and closing in on 120. He's at the 29-yard line. 3.45 left to go, and the clock moving. The only reason Richards might be in the ball game is because they're trying to break a record here with him if they're aware of it. That's unusual. Many coaches don't want to do that, but uh, that could be the reason he's still in the ball game. Needs five yards, goes to the sidelines. He has 115 yards on 24 carries. Three wide receivers to the top of the screen. Four wide outs in all for Van Pelt. Big rush on over the middle. Pass incomplete for Truett. McGillis again on the coverage for Boston Gump. That time they came with a rush and put pressure on him. Ivan Caesar was right there. Pearson and Wood, the strong shape safety. Todd Wood made the hit. As the hunter, Brian Greenfield, comes into the ball game. Fourth down and about seven yards to go. Back is Andre Green is the new receiver and punt formation for Boston College. Greenfield who just ripped off a 79-yard punt. Took his time with this one and gets about half the yard. It rolls dead at the 28-yard line, stops the clock with 307 left to go. 43 yards and about half of that on the ground. Brian Greenfield comes off the field. The Boston College offense is back on the field with 3.07 left to go in the football game. It's Pitt 29, Boston College 6. Back after this from your local station. the shaft, which turns the pinion, which turns the rack, which turns a serious luxury sedan into a sports car on a joy ride. On right, the first to two he would have on the day. Glenn Foley gets out of the pocket, throws a little short one to Toner. And Toner runs out of bounds at about the 43-yard line. Toner's had a fine second half for Boston College, both receiving and rushing for the Eagles. Three minutes left to go on the football game. Pittsburgh leading here 29 to 6. The game brings it out to the 44-yard line. Good enough for a first down. Foley back to throw. Anchors can't get away from Keith Hamilton, and he's set back for the fourth time today, the fourth sack of the Boston College quarterback. Give that sack to the defensive secondary who's in there. They did the job of getting on those receivers, and as Foley looked up field, there was nobody there. Gave Hamilton a chance to come from the outside linebacker position to put the hit on him. 
Keith Hamilton out of Lynchburg Virginia the sophomore. Lots of raw talent. And one of the top linemen coming out of high school two years ago three years ago actually. As Foley brings Boston College out second down and 16 on the loss of six of the play. Officials call time. Stopping the clock with 2.14 left, and Boston College takes a timeout. They have two left. Very interesting that, that uh, Jack Bicknell and his offensive coordinator, Dick Curl, standing right beside him in the striped shirt there, have gone the distance here with Glenn Foley. Uh, we have not seen Willie Hicks, and we have no reports that he's injured. We've got to assume that they just made the decision to go with Foley. As a matter of fact, uh, don't even see Hicks along the sideline. I've looked down there a couple of times. And uh, that indicates that possibly he might have been injured, but no word has been sent to us. So Foley has been the man for the rest of the afternoon. And he's done a good job. He's learned a lot under duress here, but he's done a good job. And he's gone up against some great competition this afternoon. Pet defense is a puzzle for a lot of people to solve this year. That's a very important one right there. That interception with six today ties the one they had in 1976 against Boston College. Six interceptions. Dobb, Etzler with two, Riddick with two, Lewis with one. Second down long, long count for Foley. Throwing one. Hilbert on the play, covered that time by Vernon Lewis, and it is going to be interference. Pass interference on Lewis, and it brings up first down at the 45-yard line. Okay, here's the pressure. He automatic on the line of scrimmage. He took his time here. Good pressure. See number 92 coming in here. That's Scott uh, Keith Hamilton again. He elevates that pass. Makes it very hard for him to throw it. But downfield... In the area, number 42, Lewis, the defensive back, who's had a fine day today, had his hands on his back, and they called him. Made a big stop, intercepted the pass at the end of the first half, and blocked a big punt. After BC had held defensively at the one-yard line, the next series, he blocked the punt, and that really turned the ball game around. Pass interference. Pass. 15 yards. First down. 15 yards brings the ball back to Boston College in pit territory at the 48. They did not see the ball in pit territory at all in the first half. Jack uh, Bicknell, knowing he's got to go in the next week against Ohio State at home, he's going to probably have to do it with his quarterback, Len Foley, red-shirted freshman. Foley back to throw, complete to Sanders. Close to a first down. Brought down on the play by Lex Perkins. Lex Perkins. Alexis Perkins is a junior junior college transfer out of San Bernardino, California, playing at the free safety position for senior Doug Hetzler, who has had an outstanding day. Hetzler. Perkins, they think a lot of. They think he's a, a good, dependable young player. Got him out of junior college and feel he'll back up and do a good job there. Sanders walks back to the huddle. They'll measure this game and see if it's close enough for a first down. Stops the clock with 1.56 remaining. In the fourth quarter of play. It's Pitt 29 to 6 over Boston College. Scott Kaplan started off four minutes into it with a 26-yard field goal that was partially deflected through the uprights. Then a block punt in the end zone by Vernon Lewis made it 5 0. Glenn DeVoe with a three-yard touchdown run made it 12 0. Kaplan added a field goal to make it 15 0 at half. Doug Hetzler intercepted a pass, returned it 15 yards to make it 22 to nothing. Then BC got on the scoreboard on the first of two Sean Wright field goals to make it 22 to three. Kervin Richards made it 29 to three with a five yard jot, and Wright added another field goal. It didn't get enough for first down. It's second and one at the 38. Back to throw. There's Foley over the middle. It is complete for Sanders. Inside the 20 at the 18-yard line. What a catch by Mike Sanders. What concentration by the senior Mike Sanders to come down the middle, released from the slot position. They had him in the slot, and Foley threaded the needle, perfectly thrown, but a great catch by, by uh, Sanders. Minute 40 left to go on the football game. Clock moving now once the change are set. Foley back to throw. Big pressure. Hamilton decked in. The ball is knocked away out of the pocket. Chamura is going to recover at the 12-yard line. What a strange fumble. It's 
going to go back. What happened was he fumbled the ball and it was kicked forward. Shimura had a shot at it, but he didn't come up with it. Eventually, Pitt got the football back. Here it is. He fumbles the ball on the hit here. Watch this from the outside coming in. There's the grab right there by number 92, Hamilton. Three big plays by Keith Hamilton in this series. Created the fumble, got the ball back to Pittsburgh. So Pitt picks up the turnover. That's the seventh turnover of the day for BC. First and 10. Pitt at the 13-yard line. Much of this crowd of 35,000 plus on a sunny day in Pittsburgh is headed for the exit. They're convinced, as many should be, that Penn is going to walk away with their second win of the season. DeVoe gets to the sideline, makes it to the 15-yard line, gain of about one as Pitt just tries to get out of the uh, ball game and stop the clock or keep the clock moving. As part of the Schick Most Valuable Player Award, program, Schick will donate $500 to the General Scholarship Fund for the University of Pittsburgh and Boston College. The Schick, uh, the Schick Slim Twin Disposable Razor. It reaches every place on every face. There you see our most valuable player, David Gillis and Glenn DeVoe. The Gillis came into this game. He had three great plays, seven tackles, five solos, and two assists. Here is Richards, still running, and he is short of the 20-yard line, driven out of bounds at the 18. Driven out of there. By Junta, as the clock rolls down. 42 seconds left to go. And the crowd is drawing because they posted a final score over here in State College, Pennsylvania. Texas has defeated Penn State 17-13. Now they've been absent to the crowd. Again. And here is Kervin Richards today so far. 2,747 yards, one more yard to go to move into third behind or ahead of Elliott Walker, the all-time rushing charge. Instead, they go to the fullback straight ahead, Glenn DeVoe. DeVoe charges his way to the 20. DeVoe has answered a variety of chores today. He's played on the special team. He's also moved ahead and uh, done the job in tailback, giving Kirvin Richards a spell, but also has done the job as far as fullback is concerned, Pitt came in here missing their top four fullbacks to either injury or other problems. And DeVoe filled the void there this afternoon along with Carl Hagan. Greenfield back to punt with 35 seconds left to go. Pitt leading 29 to 6. They're going to go to Norman, Oklahoma next week with a full head of steam for Boston College. They'll have to pick up the pieces and come back at home against Ohio State. We'll have that game for you. Greenfield lines up to punt. There is Andre Green, back to receive for Boston College. Town of Pittsburgh a buzz with a lot of things happening. The Steelers open up tomorrow, the Pirates in the pennant chase. And now the Pitt Panthers enter the sports scene with a successful start to their season. Seconds left to go. 29 to 6 the score, Pittsburgh lead. Nice kick under pressure. Floats. Green picks it up at the 36. Goes down once.